in full control of his himself and I'm also in control. Of all the crowds chanting for uh Forever King. <laughs> Forever King finally making it to the building. Uh I'm not sure what happened, why he couldn't get the you know, the lights to come out and to just reappear as Batman, but He's here as Forever King, so I think that's good enough. I think he's saving that for later. Maybe Grand Finals. Maybe Grand Finals, yeah, when he goes, <laughs> or, you know, when he goes to see Theo. Uh-oh. Now this is the E-League run back. Forever King shaking the hand of Sonic Fox, the same Sonic Fox that he double eliminated at E-League. This is, Sonic Fox is sitting next to the man, fully responsible for his loss at E-League, oh, yeah. live on TBS in front of Everybody. He got sent home early. He was able to practice a little bit more Marvel than. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear <laughs> the Marvel excuse. I'm not. I, I'm done hearing that. Like, Forever King just Destroyed. outplayed him. Yeah, he outplayed good. him that day. It was um, good. I saw so many things that, that Batman players were not doing against Captain Cold because Sonic Fox was just like, this is a 6 4 or a 7 3 in Captain Cold's favor, I'm going to pick this character. Okay. You know, we, we did talk a little bit about how Sonic Fox likes to play with a, a bunch of different characters and... Pac-Man. But Hellboy. he picks different characters when those matchups are in his favor. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, oh, cool, I'm using Captain Cold, he's a really bad character, but I'm using him in 7-3s in my favor, so oh, right. what does that matter? He can instantly see that, and he's like, oh, I don't like that, so I'm that just gonna get up supposed to scare me. What do you think? That you're kidding yourself. Begin. <laughs> <laughs> that you're kidding yourself. Hellboy's vicious, man. He does not care. He does not care. And uh, Sonic Fox getting the first hit meter award there. He's so much. Uh, he's got so much meter right now. But Forever King does have mechanical bats to help him through any neutral situation. And that's really Batman's best asset. But no mechanical bat required there for the open up. However, he drops the combo. A big mistake there by Forever King. Oh, yeah. Hit his button a little bit too quick right there. I think he'll uh, time it a little bit better next time. Yeah, I mean, maybe he was just like, he, he wasn't ready. Maybe he wasn't ready for this Hellboy. Oh, yeah. Maybe he was expecting Captain Cold because it's supposed to be such an easy matchup. Sonic Fox going with the low, but King leaving it. I, I believe that is punishable there oh, yes. when you do block uh, just regular one. It is King. super punishable. I believe that thing is like minus 30. That's like minus go get some coffee, go punish. Okay, right there what happened. Sonic Fox had the clear punish there with the meter burn back three. However, King had the backup plan with the mechanical bat to save him. Uh, unfortunately, not sure if it's going to be enough. King down to a pixel on his first health. Sonic Fox looking for the jump. Ooh, Sonic Fox knows something about this armor that's really uh, giving Batman a no tough time uh, gaining his presence. Yeah, so as soon as Hellboy does turn on that armor, turn on that, that trait, if he goes specifically for the armor, right. uh, instead of Hellboy going into a regular hit stun animation, Hellboy goes into a very static, normal animation. Now, this is a great way to kind of uh, inflict more pressure on your opponent uh, by letting go purposely on slower, heavier attacks and punishing them before you know they recover. Oh yeah, it doesn't look like Batman can really uh, zone in this matchup. It looks like every time he tries to, or thinks about putting the batter ring, Santa Fox is just shooting him and just... Ready for more? I am so over this crap. <laughs> so over this crap. Forever King using two bars, getting 25% back. 15 for the first bar and 10% for the second. I think that's a good bang for your buck. Oh yeah, Sonic Fox is throwing out some some staggers right there. You know, he could meet a burner any second and uh, Forever King disrespecting that. Oh, and the nut punch shoving Forever King a little bit closer to the corner, trying to do anything but block in that situation. Not sure if King was looking for a wake up, not sure if King was looking to just jump out, but Sonic Fox right behind him. Oh yeah, and Sonic Fox right there, he, was, he knew King had two bars a meter and he waited for him to hop out, and if he didn't hop out, he was just gonna meet him and kill him. Begin. Hey, who's getting the first bar? Not Forever King as he just floats in the air after the the the, the sparkle. Oh yeah. As to kind of tell Sonic Fox, okay, punish me. I'm here, punish me while I'm still in the air. Oh yeah. And also I, I love Sonic Fox awareness. Batman had three bats, went for the slide, blocked the slide, and didn't not respect not one bat and just down one automatically. I love that. He just went for it. You, you know, yesterday we saw Forever King kind of holding on to those bats in that situation. Uh, because they do have uh, actual combo ability as long as Batman is not recovering. And Sonic Fox knows the tendencies. He, he definitely studies all these other top players. 
and, and can figure out what they're trying to do when they're trying to do it. Oh man, these staggers. Sonic Fox is being super oppressive. And there it is. Normally that jump in two should be safe when it makes contact. But the fact that Sonic Fox had that armor on there, he ate the hit, took the static hits that animation, and punished Forever King before he even landed on the ground. And King going right Begin. into rematch. I don't like this at all. Oh, King anti-airing as soon as he sees Hellboy jump. Releasing the bats a little bit faster that time. He didn't want Sonic to poke out. He didn't want to get punished for it. He didn't want to, he didn't want those bats to go away in vain. When Sonic has his trade-up, he's just using the armor. He every time uh he's just walking in and in his range that he wants, taking a hit and then just throwing his buttons out. And here we go, Forever King getting something started here. Not quite not quite completing the combo here. And now, unfortunately, because of that execution error, he finds himself in a really tough spot here against Hellboy with his backup against the corner. Uses the interactable to get out of there, try to buy some real estate, buy some breathing room. Ooh, Sonic Fox is jumping in the air, going straight for the low, trying to implement this damage on him and just bullying him straight into the corner, going into the next health bar. Ooh, whiff punish. Lovely stuff by Sonic Fox. Unfortunately for King, the interact will not fast enough. Sonic just bullying him, just keeping him in the corner, hitting him with these little mix shenanigans. He really knows how to deal with this, with King going for that tree interact will every single time. Oh yeah, um, he keeps going into a uh, leap with, with the, uh, the dashes for a mix up after he hits a button and you get instant uh, air, air jump you can instant hit a button in the air and they'll hit him out of it, but King just blocking and holding the mix. Yeah, King's blocking, however, King is on life support as he's down. This is his last chance here. Can Sonic Fox close this out and show us another 3-0 here on stream? Oh, yes. Oh my yeah. goodness. Going that instant air low, man. The instant air low, the it now that low, just like Dark Side's low, it kind of just messes with your head. Uh, you know, everything that you've learned as a fighting game player throughout the years, you see a jump in, and everything in your your being is yelling, here comes an overhead, here comes an overhead, I need to stand up to block this, and then you just go into the low, and it just really drives you insane. Oh, yeah, it's that um, non-mix-up mix-up. It's like you can see it, the move that is coming, but you just think in your head, like, oh, he's in the air. I'm just going to block, hold him back, and I'm standing up. It's like backwards day for a split second. You're just oh, like, yeah. why? Why did that hit me? But Sonic Fox moves on. He's going to be taking on his teammate, Theo, in the winner's finals here as Forever King gets sent over to the loser's, uh, the loser's side of the bracket, the lower bracket. That's the nicer word, the lower right. bracket. The lower bracket. The lower bracket. <laughs> Um, and next up, we have Katana Prime on the stage. He's going to be going up against Soon Neo. Soon Neo, oh, Green Arrow Extraordinaire. Oh, yeah. uh, and, you know, this That's is just awesome. a guy, the more I see him, the more I'm impressed. And, you know, same thing with Katana Prime, just seeing that competitive edge in him oh, and, yeah. and seeing where everything started because that's that's really – how you get into this. Yeah, uh, you can't just get into it out of nowhere. Like, of course, you got to love what you're doing. And uh, here we do have a replay from the last set when Sonic Fox took it over Forever King 3-0. This is the first game. Sonic Fox pretty much in complete control there. That is him letting go of, uh, of the block purposely just to kind of eat that jump in two and punishing it um, before he even lands on the ground and is able to block. Right, right, right. It's just a, a whole bunch of unfamiliarity, really. Because it, it, it looked like Forever King didn't know like how to handle some of the stuff. Ooh, now, uh, Katana Prime going with the Panda get-up gear. I love the sweater. He was a lion yesterday. Today he's the Panda. Okay. He's got, a little, he's got a little alternate persona up here on stage. Okay, I see it. I like it. Absolutely. I like it. Oh, what was his name? KP. and uh, uh, Sunio. Oh, yeah. BFGC Sunio. Soon Neo. All right, is this a button check? No, yeah, that, that looks like you, no, yeah. That's that a button, button check. check. That's not Green Arrow. That's the only thing that I don't like about randomized gear is when Green Arrow and Green Lantern come on the stage. Sometimes they're under a different, you know, color, and I'm just like, that's that's Yellow Arrow. That's definitely that's, not him. That's that's <laughs> Red Lantern. What I play Green Arrow, and I only use the green shaders. I do not care. You can Yeah, <laughs> I would too if I played that guy. <laughs> oh man. Right. Sunio is the best Begin. green arrow on Buffalo. So let's see what he can do with the best Harley in Florida. 
All right, here and Suneo does get the first hit. Uh, I feel like Green Arrow is really good at that, especially because he doesn't even need to load up arrows. You know, those green, the regular stock arrow, arrows uh, do travel pretty well, and he's got some nice mix-ups with them. Oh yeah, absolutely. They, they gain a lot of advantage, but they don't do a lot of damage. Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's exactly what you're looking for in that first hit because you get that nice, juicy meter award, the meter bonus uh, for getting that first hit. You don't just get props, you get meter. Oh, absolutely. Now, Sonio setting the pace with Green Arrow, getting a lot of the zoning game in because he's doing damage. He's knocking down with fire arrows and making it hard for Katana Prime to insert her game. And right there, reading that roll perfectly is Sunio as he punishes Katana Prime with that down two. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, in Injustice 2, there is a offensive roll mechanic uh, to kind of try to counteract uh, zoning uh, opportunities or zoning situations that your opponent might want to inflict on you. And all you have to do is dash forward and cancel into a meter burn roll. Uh, of course, for the cost of one meter, you do get invincibility frames and a lot closer to your opponent. Oh, absolutely. Just Sonio just being a, a train wreck right now, just sending arrows and just letting them fly and they're just hitting their mark. I mean, this is complete control here. It's Katana Prime trying to find his way in. Almost found it, but he was a little bit worried about that interactable bomb detonation there. And so he just decided to back off, didn't want to eat the interactable, and, and tried to play it again. But that Wonder was Woman. very decisive. Oh, yeah. In Sunia's favor. Now, here we go. Atlantis. Katana Prime switching over to Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman has a, a little bit more of a, of a full screen, or I guess a mid to full screen presence. Right. Uh, but in this matchup, Begin. you know, if you're Wonder Woman, you don't want to be at complete full screen. No, absolutely not. But um, I, I believe Katana, Katana Prime knows that and is definitely going to keep him at the range there he wants to be in. Yeah, just like just a little bit closer than full screen. And a great punish there. Uh, doesn't complete a combo afterwards or any kind of situation, but he is able to kind of stop Sunio and make him waste the bar. Oh my goodness. Katana Prime is just laying it in Green Arrow right now. Kind of making all these reads. Yeah, no, it's all smart stuff there. Green Arrow trying to get a little bit of breathing room now because of this matchup. Uh, the breathing room now becomes a little bit farther away if you're looking at it from the perspective of Green Arrow. Green Arrow wants to be completely max range. He wants to be outside of shield throw uh, range, and, and shield throw goes pretty far. Oh yeah, it goes pretty far and it's very fast. It's twice as fast as Arrow. Getting hit by the down one fidget spinner. Going into full combo. This is going to give him a load and a little full screen presence, but he gets hit with a shield straight to the dome. Shield straight to the dome. However, Sunio trying to get his full screen game started. Never mind, right as I say that, slide out the gate and a very smart stuff there to go cancel into the post spin just to chip out Katana Prime on that last little pixel of his gray, uh, of his gray bar. Oh, yes, that, that post spin does do a considerably a large amount of damage when blocked. And just sniping Wonder Woman out of the sky there. She tries to get her shield game started there. Tries to go for a jump in here, but Sunio keeping her at bay. He's got three arrows left in that quiver. You guys can always see the progress of green arrows, uh, arrows if you do just forget uh, by looking right there at the bottom of the screen. That did so much damage. Oh, yes. Back to back, so much damage. Not clashable at all, but this is definitely the right pick. Katana Prime needs to stay here Begin. on Wonder Woman as he goes down two to zero. Absolutely. He just got hit with six arrows back to back there, and those did so much damage. But Sunio going straight into a combo, into a load. Let's see what he's going to do at this moment. That was just too much right there, my friend. I I'm still recovering from that. He just he died in an instant. No opportunity, no wiggle room there. A big heartbreaker, and it looks like Katana Prime still being affected by that uh, oh, yeah. going into the next game of the set. Oh, yeah, the arrows could definitely do a mini bread and butter combo damage wise. Not really a favorable trade there for Katana Prime. Uh, I believe he, he's not looking to do it again, especially considering that he's at a, a pretty good life deficit right now. Who gets hit with the arrows? He's testing his reactions. Uh, Katana Prime is trying to anti air him, but for trying to anti air him, he's just going straight with the arrows and is blowing it up. Yeah, no, 
right there what Green Arrow is doing with those down arrows is he's actually messing with his jump arc trajectory. So instead of going completing and, and completing the jump arc, he's just stopping himself completely in midair and, and punishing Katana Prime for trying to anti-air. Oh yes, Katana Prime in that sweet spot with that shield range right now. If he can stay right here, right he can here. definitely take this game. That's exactly where he wants to be. Blocks all those arrows successfully. Good stuff there by Katana Prime. Unfortunately, drops the punish, doesn't convert into the wrestling combo. Oh, Katana Prime just trying to send him to the corner. Checks him from his jump with the lasso grab. All right, Chuck of the shield there. And this is OK. He's making headway here. Unfortunately for Katana Prime, he's got almost no meter left. But as long as you can keep it unclashable, it's not going to matter. Oh, Katana Prime dodging the slides, trying to get out the way, trying to not take any more damage than is necessary to reach Green Arrow and take his last life bar. Oh, not anticipating the second hit there of the Savage Blast as soon Neo does meter burn and looking for something there, but eats the back end of that, that bow with a meter burn back three. Ooh, two more fire arrows. Oh, but he does try to walk forward. He gets hit with the meter burn Savage Blast. Green Another 3-0 in this top eight at NECA. <laughs> Yeah, this is all we're seeing so far, but that second game and that pick with Wonder Woman is definitely the way to go. Oh, yeah. Just a few bad guesses there. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things when someone punishes you for doing something, you know, you, you got to second guess it. You know, oh, yeah. okay, he, he's jumping in on me. Don't hand tire. Oh, just yeah. Just wait it out. Um, it's just, it's, it's honestly a great thing because when he first started with Harley, to me, honestly, I think Harley gets beat long range and up close. So it's very, very hard to win that matchup because they kind of do the same thing. They want to be in and out or, you know, off as full screen or up close. Kinda, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they both have good meterless damage and, you know, they, they do good things up close. It's just like Harley, she could low profile stuff for her tantrum and then she has gimmicks. She could either follow through with a cartwheel or just stay on the ground. Yeah, but it's kind of one of those things where, like, all those strengths that, that come from Harley really don't equal upright or peg yeah. upright going up against Green Arrow. He's kind of got something to really counter it. And Katana Prime did see that, and, you know, he, he made the right decision there. He saw the situation, and he's like, okay, this is not working at all. I don't feel like I'm in control. I need to go my, my other character. And, and he was really close. He was really close to getting the job done. However, like, let's check out this replay here. Now this is Sue Neo on a, this is the last game. This is, oh, I'm sorry, this is the second game when he just lost so much health. The jumping in and Katana Prime, you can kind of see him pressing buttons there in that situation, looking for the down two and Sue Neo not giving it to him. Instead, giving him th uh, giving him a array of arrows that do so much damage. Oh yeah, and then this replay right here, he was just testing his space and you know wanted to cr control that space and he felt like Katana Prime was going to jump and he get opened up with an EX back three for jumping. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, that was pretty much all she wrote. However, we're going on to the next game here. This is Losers Bracket, aka the lower bracket here. Silver Eye going up against White Boy. Now White Boy found himself here in this bracket because he lost to Forever King. And uh, I'm trying to remember who Silver Eye's. Uh, Silver Eye also losing to Sonic Fox. Oh yes, right at the start of top 16. So, you know, these guys losing to some... Hellboy mirror, didn't they? I'm sorry? The, the, the Hellboy mirror. For a yes. Bit. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Switch right to bat. You were right, man. Go and why not? Why stray away from something that you clearly saw work on White Boy yesterday? Uh, Batman, as long as he's got a mechanical bat out, he actually has a great answer to Scarecrow's uh, command grab uh, in the sense that he can, you know, most characters and... and that's, that's a, another big gripe that I see with this. Uh, other people playing this game or looking to play this game is uh, they feel that when you neutral jump a command grab that you should be able to punish it. Right. But you got to introduce them to Scarecrow's command grab because that is not the case. Yep. On whiff, it recovers so fast. But Batman does have a pretty nice answer to it, and that's if he's got a mechanical bat out, uh, he can release it, jump over, and continue a combo. Oh, yeah. That will punch I'll right give away. you something to fear. I love it when you're so grim. You bring that out in me. Begin. Oh. Uh, Robert Eng the water. Robert England voicing Scarecrow. Some of you might not know that, or you think that that voice sounds a little familiar. That is Freddy Krueger. All right, King just trying to 
get something going here and kind of letting White Boy build meter alongside with him. But, you know, what, what is the right answer? Do you stop throwing Batarangs and, and are you okay with both of you not having meter or do you continue to build meter knowing that your opponent is also building meter? Right, right, right. Um, I feel like what I definitely called Silver Eye Forever King. I'm sorry about that. Uh, what I noticed that Forever King was doing when he was playing White Boy yesterday, uh, kind of switching switching gears, you know, going from super defensive as, as soon as he got a mechanical bat out, uh, he just changed it all up, super aggressive, in there, in his face. Oh yeah, he didn't want um, White Boy to basically build meter so he could do some of the best up stuff that, you know, Scarecrow can have. Also, beat the burn roll in on Batman would destroy him. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, and that was definitely it. Uh, I feel like King was more aware and, and was worried about uh, Scarecrow building meter. And I think Silver Eye needs to take a, a page out of his book. And, and, you know, it worked. King knocked him into the lower bracket. Again, like we were talking about earlier, too, in the bad matchups that Scarecrow has, as soon as he puts your back to that corner, that matchup changes drastically. Oh, yeah, it changes drastically. The command grab becomes more of a blender there, meaning that he gets to continue to apply pressure after it connects uh, successfully. Somehow, that did not punish. Uh, what a heartbreaker there for Silver. I was so sure that he had the full combo right there, but he needs to keep his head in the game, not let the pass dwell in his mind and affect his gameplay. Oh, yes. Um, White Bite doing a, a perfect game plan right here. Just trying to keep him in the corner, moving back a little bit, letting him have some space, thinking he has time to wiggle, but actually he really does not. White Boy's trying to close the gap. He was looking for the forward three and Silver Eye, not letting any space between him and White Boy straight too long without having a Batarang or a mechanical bat. Uh, Occupying it. Right, right. I, I, I totally believe that White Boy thought he had the bar to actually go through that. Yeah. White Boy with the empty jump, just kind of inflicting the fear of one of those really long range uh, jump ins uh, that we do see in his jump in three or his jump in two. Oh, yes. But Silver Eye's really got to kick it up a gear, and here could be the start of it. Finally getting rid of that gray bar. Silver Eye on his way to making a comeback here as long as he can keep Scarecrow in this corner. Ooh. I thought he was going to go a little bit back and try to uh, uh, gain space, but he went straight in. All Push right. blocks. He gets rid of the bat. That's a beautiful thing. Uh, Scarecrow's. Now, Scarecrow does have Traumatize up. While that icon is green, he has access to the Traumatize move that you just saw right there. It is a full screen mid. So you really can't press buttons, even if he's really far away. That's it. That was the game, unless Silver Eye's got some kind of backup plan to stay completely away from Scarecrow, and he doesn't. And uh, so basically right there, when Scarecrow's character power is activated, he releases the Fear Toxin through the pores of that mummified creature that you see before you. Uh, and if you if he's anywhere near his opponent, his opponent is going to be taking damage over time. Now he's gonna be taking damage over time no matter what. It doesn't matter if his opponent's sitting there blocking, it doesn't matter if he's forcing him to block or actually comboing Scarecrow. He will still be affected by the damage over time in the fear toxin that oh, is yeah. Scarecrow's character power. Oh yeah, it's like every time that uh, he knew that he was gonna teleport, it was like 2%, 2% every time I teleport. Silver Ride just trying to keep him out. He has three bats up, does not want to use any of those bats. He wants to keep them just in case White Boy tries to make a move inside. I think uh, Silver Eye is also looking for the opportunity to uh, possibly meter burn uh, Batarang for a little bit of more a little bit more damage. Uh, and White Boy just never really presented the opportunity. Great job there by Silver Eye. Doesn't want anything to do with that plus pressure there. Oh, yeah. uh, whenever you see those back-to-back -back fear blasts, uh, Scarecrow's very blessed afterwards. And with that down one, he can really, really apply some twisted mind games. Oh yeah, Silver Eye went for a mix-up there with the uh, uh, the low gimmick for the 50-50, but he puts himself in the corner. Huge drop there. A little bit of a miscalculation on the timing there by Silver Eye. Puts him in the bad spot on the corner. That, re that move recovered way faster than I anticipated it to in uh, Scarecrow Stand 3. Ooh, read that, read that he delayed wake up and then he just put a media on him. It was gonna be a plus media as well. Oh, the challenge with the down one immediately after the jump in. Uh, I wanna see a little bit more of the 2-2-3 string from Silver Eye. That is typically a great way to challenge anyone. 
trying to, or a great way to stop anyone challenging your jumping two when you're playing as Batman. Oh uh, yes. If they're poking out of your jumping, uh, jumping two, one two, go for two two three instead. They hit as mids and they will blow up any crouching character. Oh yes. Um, white boy getting a little bit impatient, going for. Whew, that was the silly stuff right there. That was the 50-50 stop me right in my tracks. That is, that is the 50-50 vortex. It still lives on and it still exists. Somehow didn't combo there. Looking for the crazy down one that we usually see from White Boy in that situation. But White Boy just had a feeling. He just said, I, I don't want to press the button here. I don't. Oh yeah, the, the, the thoughts going in his head is just crazy. I don't understand why he did it, but he just knew. I never quit. Yeah, so when, uh, whenever you see Batman covering himself up with that cape, it's actually his parry. That parry will parry mids, overheads, and highs, but it will not parry jump-ins or lows. Uh, so usually it's a great it's a great thing to throw out in Scarecrow. Arkham's your next stop. That sounds terrifying. Terrifying indeed. But yeah, the parry is something that you can kind of throw out to Scarecrow a lot in the neutral uh, because his, he, he doesn't really have... Uh, he has a lot of long-ranging mids, so oh, yeah. he usually, he's usually going for one of those. Yeah, and that, that's definitely, he wants to touch it. He doesn't have a projectile, so. Ooh, going in with the teleport. Down one, bounce to the back of the screen. Gonna leave him standing right here. There's gonna be a mix-up. And Silver Eye blocked it and used that very first opportunity to push Block away at the, at the expense of one of his bars. Built him a little bit more breathing room, trying to just frame trap White Boy after he blocks that, that, that mechanical bat. Ooh, white boy putting the damage on with 4-3, activating the trait with the downtime. Ooh, he baits out the parry. He just says, hey, look, man, I'm going to wait for you to move, and then I'm going to move. It's simple dance moves. It, it was, and white boy did have a lot of cushion there. He still had his clash that he had access to, and, you know, he really wasn't sweating it. He wasn't in a bad position where Silver on the other end was on life support. So when you get de when your opponent gets desperate, that's when you'll see uh, more moves like that. You know, moves like wake up, uh, wake up attacks or 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 parries. Oh yeah. See, Silver Eye at the start of the game has been opting to zone. Um, this game no different from the others. But let's see if he stays zoning or if he goes into the uh, a close approach. And right now, Silver Eye kind of stopped with that zoning because of the traumatized threat there in White Boys. Uh, character power there, looking for it, and what a great reaction there by Silver Eye. Unfortunately, a little too far away to connect. My heart is broken. Oh, I yes. got to see that, to see the smart stuff there by Silver Eye, just a little off, just destroys me inside. Oh, yes. Now, White Boy just push blocking him straight to the corner. Every time Batman jumps in, he's push blocking him, keeping him in the corner, locked down without a key. White Boy doing such a good job of blocking all these ambiguous jump-ins there by Batman's jumping too. Are we going to see a teleporter? Is White Boy just completely content? He said, you know what? I'll build some meter. White Boy just content on walking in, does not care. So, you know, either stay back and build some meter or walk up and, uh, you know, take away a little bit of the real estate that Batman has so you can eventually just put him in the corner. Oh, yeah. And the nerfs to uh, Batman's meter game shows right now. He barely has any. He has one bar, and he's been throwing so many batteries that can't even count. Oh, the stretching there, right there at the end of the command grab. Ooh, nice interrupt with the bat, mechanical bat. That was just beautiful. Yeah, that was really good there, and that's that's really what Batman, that, that's a key thing that he has in this matchup. Not sure if it's, you know, complete, if, it, if it's in his favor or not, but that is something that Scarecrow needs to specifically watch out for. Uh, oh, yeah. It's something that a lot of other characters can't do, and, and that is punish his uh, his command grab really easily. He definitely, definitely, definitely has to figure something out. I think it's a, a one frame gap that you can actually do that. So Ryan just trying to keep him out, does not want him close, but he's back into the corner. And that was enough to seal the first bar. Silver Eye looking a lot better. Unfortunately, he does not have a lot in the meter department here. Uh, so it, I would say he probably has no access to a, a clean clash. You know, any clash that he, he will initiate or once Scarecrow does get his hands on him uh, could spell trouble for him, especially after that push block. I think Silver Eye just is not anticipating, not, just not caring about the fact that he as he's at a meter disadvantage. Oh yeah. He has that fear gas present. Ooh, 
just push block him every time Silver Eye jumps in. This nightmare will not stop. Don't bet on it. All right, White Boy's got two bars. Did not, a little reluctant to spend the last one, possibly banking on the fact that Silver Eye had no, it had less bars, so why would he spend any of his precious meter? But Silver Eye doesn't care, switching it up a little bit. Ooh, now he's in a bad position, only one bar. Well, having no bar no against Scarecrow this. in the corner. This yeah. is nowhere yet. All right, one bar apiece. What are they going to do? They both decide to go for the aggressive move. Unfortunately for Silver Eye, he didn't have a bar to extend the combo of that straight grapple. However, uh, we can do something here. He's waiting out the traumatize. What a smart play here by Silver Eye. Silver Eye extended the combo. That did, was not a mix-up. Yeah, I think he was just buying time from the, the traumatized. Gets the back throw. What a huge whip there by White Boy, but he does get lucky in this situation. Silver Eye could have punished it a lot more. Next hit can kill. Again, this is match point for White Boy. Can Silver Rye make this comeback? Here this we go. This good for him. Oh, he was trying to meet her from the sparkles, and White Boy just push blocks. Didn't want anything to do with it. And that is Silver Eye. Gets the move on to game four. He's still at this. And there's no, look, White Boy wiping the sweat the sweat off his hands. He was nervous right there in that situation. He knew that he was so close to 3-0-ing Silver Eye and Silver Eye getting on the board, showing signs of life. Oh, I don't know what these guys are saying to each other. Oh man, they're, they're probably telling, man, that was crazy. That was crazy, I know. No, no, no. I think he's at, you're free. <laughs> in <Oz> here, bro. <laughs> no, you're free. <laughs> No, 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 you're Not free. So you can yeah. get help. <laughs> Begin. Looking for that down two, and unfortunately uh, for Silver Eye, he kind of didn't react to it and left it unpunished. Silver Eye getting the clean jump in on the lift down one. Now, I love Silver Eye's use of, uh, I feel like he's the Batman player that goes for 1-1-3 one, one, a lot more. Uh, it does have a gap, but if your opponent blocks it, it leaves you super duper plus. Oh, yeah. Not too many people exploit the gap, to be honest. I, I've actually seen nobody really exploit Silver Eye during that. Who oh. goes for the raw for three? Hey, if it's that far away, it, it, it's okay if it hits and it's okay if it misses. Right? right? Just, just go for it. Perfect footsies on that. Push blocking away, a bar for a bar. I feel like that's a good trade, but unfortunately for Silver Eye, he is at a huge life deficit right now, down by around 65% and more after this combo. Oh no, we're in the corner, this is gonna hurt, and he slides his way out. What a maniac. Oh man. White Boy just still in the same spot he's been in the whole time. He's just teleporting to get in. And the perfect punish there by Silver Eye. Well calculated there, going for some kind of mix up there. And White Boy blocks correctly. White Boy doing such a good job of blocking these jump in twos. He really understands where the, the cross up arc is, like exactly when a jump over move is going to cross up on him. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And uh, Silver Eye just sticking with the zoning aspect. He knows he can beat him far away. He does not want to let the animal up close. Never mind, White Boy not seeing that one coming at all. Not Gets whatsoever. hit, gets opened up. Not sure if it crossed up. I'm pretty sure Silver Eye's not sure if it crossed up or not. Are you scared yet? I'm Batman. Oh, he's Batman. He's not scared, he's just Batman. It never gets old. Oh, he's just Batman, I'm Batman. He's been saying it's just Justice one. He's been <laughs> saying it's since MK vs. DC. Uh, all right, so. White Boy does have the traumatized ready to go, so that's kind of why Silver Eye decided to kind of take a backseat on the zoning. Knows that he's just one traumatized away from eating a full combo. Oh, yeah. White Boy just throwing buttons out there, controlling space, trying to get Silver Eye to do Arkham's something. Your next stop. This is nowhere yet. I think that's the best time to do your traumatized attack is like right as it goes away. It's, it's like your opponent thinks like, okay, it's gone. He can't right. do it anymore. No, he did it. Oh yeah, he did it right before it went right, away. Like right at the last possible frame, just perfectly does it. Oh, both players have very low meter. However, uh, one one combo can lead uh, into a 50-50 vortex there by Silver Eye. So all he really has to do is get his hands on Scarecrow one time, but I think he's he's super afraid of this. Uh, well, now he kind of just forced the traumatized to come out, so he zoning is not an option right now. 
Oh, yeah. You don't want to trade with that Traumatize. That Traumatize is going to mean a lot of damage for Scarecrow. And what a drop there. Oh, yeah. He, he went straight for the air there. He could have had the background bounce and almost a kill. Not only just almost a kill, but into a, a re position. He had the bar. What a missed opportunity there by Silver Eye. Can he make this up? Can he come back from this? He possibly... Silver Eye dropping yet another possible game-winning combo here, but he gets it right here. The flip out at the end. Push block and he get away from him. The back two, three correctly blocked by White Boy. Oh my God, White Boy walking up and hitting him with the command throw. I think Silver Eye dropped that last combo because he was trying to bait out that air flip out. Wait, he didn't give it to him. Oh my goodness, and he did it the next time. He didn't get into him. Bad decision after bad decision. And right there, what happens at the end? Uh, in this game, you can use two bars to go for an air escape if your opponent is juggling you in the air. And you can either do a down air escape or a back air escape, oh, you know, man. depending on the situation. And Silver Eye trying to bait it out, then not anticipating it, and then dropping it right there at the end. And White Boy with the last play there, hitting him with the jump in two, and then just saying, I'm just going to go for command throw. Right? Go the the most command. savage thing ever. And I think he still, I don't know if he had trade up at the end, but he could have still died maybe if he jumped it. But if Silver Ride jumped it, oh, no. That was and just uh, the, the other thing that was really impressive, like I feel like that was the first time in that last scramble at the end, the first time Silver Eye really went for like a back two three to try to trick uh, White Boy with the overhead. And White Boy just correctly blocked there and just ready to, to 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 clutch it out in that perfect moment, in that perfect little scramble there at the end. All right, guys, um, time to shout out some uh, sponsor ads real fast. First off, shout out to our folks at Tech. Um, you can get 20% off, basically, actually 5% if you enter the coupon code NEC18 at checkout, and that's at focusattack.com. Uh, up next, Eric's having a Twitter sale, uh, coupon code NECXVIII, adark.com. Battle until the 19th, so in a couple more days. Uh, up next, shout out to our controller chaos. Say 10% off, coupon code NEC, controllerchaos.com. Uh, up next, uh, Go For Broke, 15K across Marvel, Street Fighter, and Tekken 7. January 13th to the 14th in Atlantic City, NerdStreetGamers.com. Uh, Dynamic Custom Beauty Works, um, officially licensed by Capcom still. Be sure to check them out at DynamicBeautyWorks.com, and you get free shipping. Uh, no promo code needed, USA only. And don't forget to follow their uh, Twitch stream. And guys, we are, we are about halfway uh, through the tournament right now in uh, top eight. So thank you guys um, who have contributed uh, so far. If you want to contribute, there's still time. Uh, click the material link that I pasted in the Moonbot chat. Type, click contribute and use the promo code NEC to us for a free dollar. And uh, any items purchased, like, do increase the prize pool. You see that Daigo book. Um, Matrina is basically giving away all the proceeds to the tournament. If you want to get any hoodies and stuff, keyboards, various items, uh, it's all there. And thanks for supporting. <laughs> All right, so Sunio and uh, King, huh? All right, so we got Sunio going up against Forever King. Now I feel like Forever King kind of knows this matchup pretty well. Might be because of you, might not because of you. Oh, or yeah. maybe it's because of he knows exactly when to meter burn forward three when Green Arrow wants to get away and Savage Blast. Oh, yeah, and, and it's, a, uh, it's really Thunders good because King Red has really, really, really good defense in this matchup, and I am not BSing whatsoever. It's really hard to hit him with any arrows. So let's see if Sunio can do something about Begin. that. All right, uh, I believe this is a button check here, again, because you don't ever see anyone switch stance in a real game. Uh, these are also known as combo checks here in the NRS community. Oh yeah, and what's with Green Arrow being yellow every game that Sony was on screen? Is he just putting that code in or something? I'm not sure, man. I really don't like it though. It's not Yellow Arrow. It is definitely Green Arrow. Oh, absolutely. And all right, so are we gonna let these intros rock? I think we are. This is gonna be good. I need to know what you can do. Can't just be fun and educational. Begin. Ooh, both just, billionaires showing off right now. Just, what a, oh man, he's just such a jokester all the time, every day. Getting that first hit award there is Forever King just by a little bit of time there. The mechanical bat does meet Green Arrow before the, the, the arrow meets him. Oh yeah, absolutely. And this matchup um, was tough for Batman before he got nerfed. 
so I would assume that it's a little bit worse now as well. So yeah, he I mean, definitely can do it. I, Batman didn't get too much in the nerf department outside of his, his jump into hitbox, uh, but the, the a lot less meter gain on his Batarang really messes with his full screen presence. So what you're going to see, be seeing King doing a lot is uh, going for a lot of those reads with those raw grapples there, uh, trying to anticipate Sunio to, to either Savage Blast or, or, or Backdash to kind of get out of pressure and to get out of the way. Ooh, tries to go for the mix-up right there. Blocks the Ice Arrow. It doesn't work. It doesn't work at Forever King. Oh, man, he blocks him perfectly. And he tried to 4-3 through the Savage Blast. Knows he could just down to that. I told him that. Down chewing is the easiest way. It is Batman's fastest normal button there uh, at six frames. Going for the slide there. And Sunio's doing a great job of, you know, keeping his composure once King does find his way in. Oh, yeah. And, and that's really what you have to do against Batman is understand that, you know, he's got an easy block pattern. Just block, keep your cool, and don't get aggressive. Oh, yeah. And that's really why, uh, honestly, that's really why Dragon won uh, E-League because he is able to block Batman so well uh, with so, so much composure here. Oh, yeah. Sunio again opened up by the ambiguous cross-up. What's he going to do now? Who gets opened up again? He was a little bit too antsy. Tried to move too fast before he was able to. Furking doing a great job of understanding the timing, understanding exactly when his opponent comes out of hit stun. Because if your timing is off by there, it could lead to a lose-lose situation where your opponent can just kind of walk into the right direction of blocking. Oh yeah, Sunio going with the 50-50. Trying to keep Batman in the corner. But if the tie can switch. And look how much more meter King has than Sunio. Is he gonna spend any more bar? Or is he looking for an unclashable situation here? Ooh, tries to hit a button. Gets popped by the belt battery. Man, I chunked that one. Push yourself harder. All right, two bars to one. What is King gonna do? Is he gonna hold on to it or gamble it up? Both players do nothing. Uh, Art, we lost. <laughs> Uh, okay, both players do nothing here, and they find themselves in a scramble. King still has one bar, and I guess what Sunio thought, or what was going on in his head is, he's got enough wiggle room to hold on to this life lead. He's tr he doesn't want to give King the opportunity to go for a clash. King with every right read there. Oh, King blowing up the gap, knowing this matchup so well, and I love it. King just walking down Green Arrow and putting that armor in his face. What's he going to do when he has only an arrow and he's jumping in the air? Begin. That was just disastrous wrong decisions there by Sunio towards the end. An impeccable play there by Forever King. Uh, Sunio was doing a great job, especially at the start of the last game, of just blocking him and, and keeping his composure. But right now, it's just kind of mixed up in his head a little bit. Great extension there of the combo thanks to that electric arrow. Oh yeah, that, that'll leave you in the air, drop your gravity really low, so... It just kind of lets you, leaves you in the air for junk, uh, juggle ability. Oh yeah. He was able to get a back three, but he opted to go for something. Hey, something he's going with the safe there. stuff that he knows he's not going to drop, oh, and there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah, because you definitely don't want to drop something in this. Especially when that last game was so close and it came down to such a scramble at the end. Opened up by the battery, trying to EX roll pass out of the corner. Yeah, no, King kind of whiffed, uh, you know, he, he whiffed that coming. Oh, and Sunio right there, trying to take advantage of the fact that he was, that Forever King was at negative 14, but Forever King did have the mechanical bat up and ready to go. That, the jump arc. Oh my gosh, that the, was awesome. It's, it's the jump arc. Uh, Green Hour does have a slightly different jump arc than a lot of the other uh, characters in this cast, so that was the cause of his demise there, Forever King just really looking for some kind of slide there. Oh yeah. And Sunio just, just punishing it. Yeah, he had no health. He was just gonna see what he can get off of that move. Ooh, he gets past the arrow. He gets past the arrow there. Sunio finds himself in a bad spot. However, he goes for the interactable. Ooh, he's gonna keep using these interactables. I mean, why not? It, it helps you in the corner, it gives you more options, and it makes King have to worry about a few more things. Time for it to oh, rain yeah. arrows. Not the smartest choice. King just keeps reacting to these EX rolls in and punishing him with bat trade to get the full combo. Making Sonio clash right there. Now, next hit, oh, Sonio could be death because he could lead into a standard reset. And the throw tech there by Forever King reacting to it, seeing it coming as Sonio dashes up and tries to throw a monkey wrench in Forever King's impeccable defense. Whoa, tried to jump, got hit with the grappling. 
goes for the damage. Just blocking every single thing. He finds the opportunity there. Jumps back with the jump back three. King is just blocking everything. I'm loving this. Sonio, exactly where he wants to be. Keep Batman at full screen range. He has no arrows out, so King can just dash up in for free. Dash up he does with a meter burn forward three right after. Unfortunately, drops the combo there. Ooh, goes with the mid. And Forever King again, taking it by less than like 20, 25%. Not too much wiggle room there for error, but he does get the W in that second game. And now we're going into game three. Sunio immediately going in a rematch. And I think that might be a decision that is gonna haunt him. Uh, you know, you wanna kind of just take your time, uh, regain your composure and understand, you know, what went wrong in those last two games. Oh yeah. You Look. don't want to shove yourself back in the same situation. Oh yeah, Why? most definitely, most definitely. Those last two games were so close in the note that two that. Ooh, I just had to stop right there. That was a remarkable stop. read. Do you see that? Yeah, he saw it. He said, you know what? You're a Batman player, so you're gonna jump in. Right, that is not invincible. That is 100% real. Trying to get the range, trying to get full screen, get away from Batman, but Batman has the trait loaded, so he can clip him out of the air. And the down two going for the safe punish. Uh, I guess Forever King anticipating him to either continue the bow spin into the with the meter burn or just let it rock, which is still unsafe. So your option that does cover both of those uh, is just the down two. Oh yeah, absolutely. Nice easy punish, go for the guaranteed stuff. Yep. Not trying to get opened up because if he misses the, the button press, then he's gonna open up for about 30%. You do not want that. I'm gonna take the down two. You know, the down two is the safe way to go. Usually the 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 way a lot of people also go with uh, Manta when they, they block that teleport. Oh yeah. Because you most definitely don't want to mess up and give him the damage for something that you already defended. Sunil trying to keep him out. Uh, Sunil, I, it seems like he's now afraid. Man, I chunked that one. Push yourself hard. I feel like now he's afraid of going for that overhead hour because King has punished him way too many times by straight up grappling or meter burn forward three. So Sunil's like, you know what? I'll take the chip damage, the free chip damage uh, with a low arrow at the back dash. Gets chased down by the raw forward three. That was had to be an empire arrow. He loaded on wake up. Definitely did not want to do that. Ooh, red the slide. He's opened up in the corner. And that is all she wrote. Forever King again whiffing out the slide perfectly with a jump back. And Sunia will uh, go home. This is the loser's bracket. That is his second life, his second tournament life. And it's now depleted as Forever King moves on. But I'm still very impressed by Sunio. Oh, yeah. Uh, he definitely went through a tough pool. Um, he beat some uh, uh, very, very, very tough competitors. He beat Knicks that beat Illusions in oh, the yeah. same matchup. So oh, yeah. That, that tells you something about him. Man. It definitely does. Yeah, it, it's there. Sunio is a force to be reckoned with. He's a very impressive player. Uh, oh, yeah. And I hope I, I see more of him out here at offline events, uh, especially right here on the East Coast since he's oh, yeah. right there in Buffalo. That's not but we're going to be seeing more Forever King. So if you guys want some more Batman hype, oh, and right. I know I do, right. don't go anywhere. And up next on the stage, we, oh, I'm sorry, we have a replay here. Now this is again Forever King perfectly sniffing out that wake up attack. Now the, the, the slide is, uh, you can make it safe on block by meter burning it. So Absolutely. Forever King just took blocking out of the equation. He's like, you know what, I'm just going to jump back hit him before he even has the opportunity to block and just go with a nice clean punish on my perfect little read. Oh yeah, it was definitely <laughs> a great thing. And Sunio started the match out with a lot of confidence and it looked towards the end of the, the set that he started getting scared. Like you said, he was more frightened on the approach that Batman could do and this and that. Yeah, no, he, he definitely was and he, he did alter his gameplay again uh, based on the fear of getting punished by so many different things. And uh, here we are, I, again, Batman forcing him into the corner, and Sue Neo just eating the raw end of this stuff. So, again, right there. I'm not sure if that was a read, anticipation, or a reaction, or maybe a little bit of, of all those things. Right, right. Uh, I, it's like definitely option slide, because if he just jumps back and he does nothing, he's completely safe and he's just back at neutral. So I guess it's like the best option for Batman right there. Instead of testing his wake-ups, because Green Arrow has a couple wake-ups that he could do that are viable that all have different timings to get blown up. So.
Yeah, so, you know, Green Arrow could do the Savage Blast, where it's kind of like, you know, it, it it's not invincible on Wake Up, but it's got such a huge active uh, hitbox yes. that it really gets under your nerves. And not only that, but it also makes him blast back and, and buys a little space between yourself and your opponent. Uh, he's got the bow spin, which is invincible on Wake Up, uh, which leads into so much combo potential. However, it is very punishable on block. Yes. And then he's got the slide. Uh, what's the slide move called? The, um, it's the stinger. The stinger, which is that slide that hits low. And he has the option to meter burn it to for an overhead hit afterwards. That makes it completely safe. And it just it's a free low check on your legs if I have meter and you know it sends you back Scare to neutral. Crow. So it's it's, it's the plus move, but it's at a range or that plus range. You know, I could definitely see that. And and it is hard to kind of grasp and, and, and get a good read on the many options that Green Arrow does have on Wake Up, and that's what I think makes him such a great character. Does a demigod oh, yeah. fear? Nothing. I'm not so sure. Begin. <laughs> Definitely a button check. Nothing. Oh, Both players talking smack to each other right now. Testing their buttons. Seeing how fast they can throw them. Yeah, no. There's a button check, guys. They're just making sure everything is mapped correctly. White Boy, one of the few stick players in the NRS scene. Especially, oh, yeah. you know, the, the top NRS players. I feel like it's just him and Biohazard. Yeah, that are playing stick. I gave it up and. What, the two weeks I couldn't do dive kicks, the, the double dive kick combo with Black Adam, so I dropped it. I mean, it's just preference, really. It's no, it's not a right answer, it's not a wrong answer. Absolutely, choice of weapon. Yeah, that's all it is. And uh, Dragon, the lamest of the lame. A very defensive, a, a defensively, a defensive to the core player, you know? He's not... He's not all about the aggression. He's about those safe setups, and he'll kind of take his time to, to figuring out when he's going to open you up. Right, right. As a white boy being the king of the walk down, he's just going to walk you down and become a brick wall and not let you move at all. Yeah, and I feel like that that, that came more out of uh, white boy in this game more than it did in the other game, uh, where he has to deal with zoning a lot more, uh, being Scarecrow, and he has to... You kind of learned a lot more patience where Doomsday just had a great let me get I in button. All right, soldier charge. Fear you. More than they fear me now. As you will now fear me. Oh, Robert England. He's definitely not a man to be messed with. Alright, first hit still hasn't been awarded. Both players blocking impeccably, and White Boy knows that the Dragon Special was coming. And now the Dragon Special is that instant jump two, very unsafe. Doesn't even hit overhead, but it's just a good way to, to, to stop an aggressive player. Oh yeah, make sure you don't hit no buttons whatsoever. Dragon now dropped the combo. That was going to give him the corner pressure. The overhead back to there. Black Adam opens up Scarecrow. Throwing Terror closer to the corner. No, White Boy decides to tech it. Get your hands off of me because I'm controlling this pace now. I'm imposing this fear blast on you. Oh, nice air to air jump one by Dragon and saying, look, these air. We got time to load the life bars afterwards. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yes. I'm gonna move it for now. So these, uh, we're gonna keep the score for you guys here verbally. So this is still the first game. So it's still zero to zero, and uh, Dragon's got a really huge life lead right now. He, oh, yeah. he, you know, he went air to air with him. Really, just kind of messed with White Boy's head there. Didn't now White Boy is really reluctant on on trying to jump, trying to do anything uh, aggressive here. Just playing the ground game, playing the neutral, very passively. White Boy's got four bars to work with, and he uses one of the bars for the meter bird back three. With that nice hit of armor there, can he chip him out? Three backdashes in a row. Black Adam, one of the best backdashes in this game. Very quick recovery, and and Dragon is running away with this pixel as far as he possibly can. White Boy finally eliminating it, getting him with the air-to-air -air, air blast. I'm sorry, the, the fear gas blast. Black Adam just taking the match with his trait that does damage, unblockable. Yeah, it's, it's unblockable damage. So for those of you who don't understand how Black Adam's trait works, the way Black Adam's trait works, with a very small and quick animation, with a snap of his fingers, he can surround himself with three orbs. Now those three orbs will 
uh, hit you. They are unblockable, and they're usually used to cancel normal strings into a very advantageous position where he can move way before his opponent can. And they're also just a great way to just put unavoidable damage on your opponent that's blocking. Now, the damage does vary between whether your opponent is blocking or not, but either way, it's inflicting damage, and it's almost guaranteed pressure, especially if Black Adam does something like you know, snap his fingers, put on the trait orbs surrounding his body, and then going with an invincible meter burn roll Black in. Adam. Very hard to avoid uh, not Scare taking bro. a single percent Fighters from that. Oh yeah, and that definitely put some salt in his lives in the beginning of this game because they were not ready for it. EX rolls are now new in Injustice 2, so it's like, he has something unblockable. He's EX rolling in, you have no health, and it's just gonna kill you. Yeah, no, it is just gonna kill you. It's a great, you know, pack it up, it's over. As soon as I snap my fingers, this is my win here. Oh. Going with the command grab here. White Boy being a little bit more of an aggressor here out the gate. Now this did kind of mess with him a little bit at the at the beginning of last game. Let's see if Dragon can just kind of do a repeat here. Unfortunately, finds himself in the corner. Challenging in all the right spots here. Now Black Adam players, uh, especially because they don't have such a great Wake up, uh, and what I mean by not a great wake up is a wake up that does not have too much uh, invincibility uh, yeah. at the start of it. It's uh, definitely slow, so. Yeah, a lot of Black Adam players do like to go with the delayed wake up mechanic in this game to throw off their opponent's timing, uh, possibly to make them whiff something and, and hopefully to be able to punish something on their way up. Dragon hits him with the black magic, caught him in the air. Just gonna take this health bar. Oh, they Never did not mind. kill! Never mind there. Instead, White Boy decides to take the first bar himself. However, I don't see this really panning out too well for him as Black Adam surrounds himself with the orbs. Now the orbs will be active for a little bit longer into this round. Not too much, but Dragon completely content and okay with letting the orbs go away, unharming White Boy. Oh yeah, he's just gonna go and try to get himself out the corner and just apply these buttons in his face, trying to not let White Boy move whatsoever. Jumping back and catching his feet with the with the meter burn lightning. Three very fast low projectiles that do a good amount of damage here. And White Boy holding onto his meter. Not sure what we're gonna see here. He gets shimmied there. Went shoulder to shoulder with him. You know, he made contact with Dragon. He said, you know what, here comes the throw. And Dragon, instead of giving him the throw he was looking for, he decides to put himself airborne and go with that forward three. White Boy just getting demolished here in the mental game. Oh yeah. Uh, this this time that, that instant jump two actually worked. The Dragon special actually worked on him. Oh yeah, Dra Dragon is definitely playing uh, uh, the defensive game, but he just keeps throwing his offensive whenever he feels like it. He's getting damaged. It's just like a boxer. Like he's in and out. A couple jabs, a nice and strong punch, and then you're out. Back yeah, at it. You're out and you're looking for your next opportunity. You're not looking to force anything uh, too aggressively down your opponent's throat. Meter per roll out. He wants to buy himself a little, a, well, way more real estate compared to what he had there in the corner. And uh, White Boy possibly anticipating the, the car throw, the interactable, challenging perfectly right there at the right time, right when Dragon said, you know what? He's not going to press a button. And right there, White Boy is ready with a down one into the background bounce. Oh, yeah. Go straight into the big damage, taking the first bar of health. Now, let's see if he can take, this, take control of this game and uh, run with it. The forward throw there, White Boy taking that extended damage because of the meter burn, I'm sorry, because of the character power in Black Adam's clouds or orbs. White Boy trying to approach. What a reaction there by White Boy, but unfortunately did not fully execute it correctly. Doesn't matter, maintains momentum, maintains the pace in his favor. He's got him in the corner. This is where he could end it. Just a few more loops. I'm yes. immune to your trickery. The nightmare's just starting. The nightmare's just starting, especially if White Boy continues to put him closer to the, uh, to the corner now. Black Adam doesn't have any kind of teleport, so he's got to figure out a way to get to the other side or he's going to be severely uh, oppressed by all this pressure. Oh, yeah, and the poison is running. He has his trade-up. He's taking damage over time. And that sweep so hard to move around when your opponent is willing 
to go for those lows that are going to reach you. So hard to, to just outspace your opponent when, when he's tripping you. He's stopping you from moving. White boy trying to leap in with his far advancing Norman button, but Dragon just hit him. Straight jab just to knock him out of it. Stand two, stand twos. We're going into the stretch. Is it going to be enough? Yes, it is. White boy on a whole new... This is a whole new player right here. Just flipped it completely. Understands this matchup and knows that he's got to keep Black Adam here in this corner. Uh, especially because Black Adam does not have any real wake-up options. Oh, yeah. He has to hold all the guesses, all the 50-50s, high low mix-ups, all that stuff. The instant overhead there. That is the foot dive of Black Adam. And look at White Boy just easily confirming, easily hit confirming, and understanding that my opponent got hit. I can continue this combo. You need more toxin. Is fear toxin considered magic? Uh, yeah, I would say it's magic. You say it's magic, okay? Oh, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I don't think Black Adam is is too weak to magic. Ooh, he tries to. Do the shimmy right there and just enforcing the button straight in his face. All plus frames as well. Oh, not sure if that crossed up. Dragon probably looking for it to cross up, and White Boy hitting it right at the perfect time and that very ambiguous spot. So his opponent didn't know if left was back or right was back. All right. Just hitting the buttons at the right time, just depressing him. He was dead no matter what. It didn't matter what he did. That fear toxins was going to kill him. I mean, I feel like he could have comboed there, but he just said, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to go for the command grab. I'm going to, like, I'm going to drag Dr. this Fate. winning game. Oh, Scarecrow. Dr. Thunder Fate. Now, Dragon, all right, Dragon is that player that's, you know what? This is straight to business, you know? I'm here for the W. I'm going to take every advantage that I can, Begin. you know? And we saw that in MKX with Tanya. We saw that in MKX with Alien. We saw that at EVO with Black Adam and Aquaman. And right now, the hot topic that everyone's talking about is how strong Dr. Fate is in this patch. Oh, so, yeah. White Boy could be going with this. We did specifically say before that Scarecrow players feel like they get out zoned by, by, by anyone in this game. Oh, yeah, anyone in this game. But like Dr. we said Fate before as well, as soon as Scarecrow gets him in the corner, that matchup number change and flip flops. Hey, man, if, if Dragon can stay away from him, punish those teleports correctly, I think he can take this, even with this huge life deficit. Oh, yeah. Good block there. Good anticipation of the interactable. Didn't want to give White Boy that first bar for free. He's making him work for it, pointing him out to everyone out there, everyone at home, pointing out this world champion. Oh. Just the presence of mind, Dr. Fate. As soon as this man gets meter, he can inflict super damage. And did you see that the huge life deficit there? As soon as Dragon got some breathing room there, as soon as he was able to start zoning, he completely turned this one game around. Oh, yeah. Okay, White Boy, not too far behind. Slightly ahead in the meter game. Um, but he still has a lot of work to do. He needs to put Dragon back in the corner. He needs to keep him there. Oh, yeah. He keeps trying to read fireballs like, when he's able to jump, but Dragon just keeps doing slow stuff. And is able to like bait the jumps. That orb. And again, right there, the Enjoy teleport. Mind games. Fate is not a game. Right there with that teleport being perfectly punished there. White boy needs to pick his times better with that with that teleport. You kinda you need to do it when your opponent's not expecting it, or while your opponent is too busy doing a different move. Right, right. Dragon's face looks really nice though. He looks, definitely knows what he's doing. Oh, this one's gonna hurt right there. The trait activated, changing the properties of all his special moves. Ooh, Flash is instantly eating the jumping. Prayers won't save you. All right, he's got three bars to spend. What's he gonna use? Two bars, Dr. Fate holding on to one more bar that he has. That is all she wrote. I don't see White Boy getting out of this situation at all as Dragon just finishes it up with the charge. Dr. Fate wins. White Boy's gotta be really upset about that lifely. He nearly had like 80% on him on oh, the yeah. first bar and he just let Dragon slip out of his clutches, slip out of his hands. As, as soon as he got some real estate behind him and he was able to start his game, his, his full screens game, like there was nothing that Scarecrow can do. Every time 
He he went three for three on punishes on the teleports. Yeah. Literally, he as soon as uh, he's dragon seen him teleport, boom, 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 and you're full screen again. Yeah. It's like, man. The perfect read after perfect read there. Dragon, you know, doing a great job of, you know, setting up the orbs, keeping away. But here we go, a replay there when Dragon was using Black Adam, perfectly spacing out that forward three attempt for the shimmy there and breaking the armor right afterwards, inflicting so much damage here, taking him to the Gotham gym, as KP loves to say, and finishing it out with the command grab there. And it was just enough to you know, solidify that first bar and to continue that momentum. I mean, you know, you gotta give it to White Boy. He played amazing there and he forced Dragon to, to, to go to another character. He forced him to go for the counter pick. And you know, to me, it, it looked like a counter pick. Oh uh, yeah. I, I it, feel it for these Scarecrow did. players, they get zoned out. All right, I believe that Scarecrow gets zoned out. Yeah, he definitely can get zoned out. And, 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 and it's awesome Lighters to see how we said even before that, that White Boy is the king of walking you down. Well, his patience is phenomenal. But he, got he got zoned out by Dr. Fate and, you know, a zoning character, I I, I see it perfectly in uh, Dragon's hands, you know, very composed. And when you're so used to that kind of pressure, Begin. so many good players would have cracked under that huge life deficit. Not only was it a huge life deficit, but Dragon was in the corner. Like oh, White yeah. Boy had everything he wanted and he just let him get away. De definitely, definitely, definitely something he's going to look back at and be like, damn, I could have did something different. He had it, man. He had it. He had such a huge life lead. But it really comes down to, to, to that one decision in that very crucial spot. But up on stage, we have Sonic Fox going up against his teammate, Echo Fox Theo. Hard to tell, but you look grumpy. My, aren't you perceptive? I'm way more of a sun and fun girl. Begin. Looks like they're going straight in. We're going straight in. Sonic Fox always ready there. Oh, Sonic. Hellboy just going straight for defenses right now. Right there. Activates the trait. Knows that no matter what, as soon as he goes in that animation, it's a static hit stun animation city here. Really, he can just kind of let Theo use those heavy attack buttons, uh, you know, purposely not block them and punish him on recovery. But you gotta pay attention to that character power. Right now it is not activated, but very soon will be if Sonic Fox decides to go for it right now. He's looking so strong and Theo just denies the airspace above him, but Sonic Fox right behind him, ready to just snipe him out as he attempts to go for the teleport away. She wasn't on screen, but she was still able to get hit. Oh yeah, Kara thought she was gonna get away, but she, the gunshot was gonna follow her no matter what. Here's a taste of girl power. That crap's getting old. Two bars apiece. Sonic Fox deciding to hold on to his, possibly for a flashy super at the end or for his own clash. Oh, yeah. Theo felt that he had to bet the bar or he was going to take the 25% damage. So he had to bet it. And yeah, no, a smart, smart mind game there by Sonic Fox by not betting it. Kind of baiting Theo into wasting his two bars. Oh, yeah. Because he did not have 25% to get back. Now he's taking the same pressure. Nice poke out. All right, the forward three modification because he is a little bit closer to the corner. Smart stuff there, putting him on his back, trying to bait the wake up, and he does, unfortunately, a little too slow there. But Theo keeps the momentum going. You know, even though Sonic Fox was blocking, he was able to keep pressing buttons afterwards. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that perfect. It's that armor, man. Purposely taking a hit will open up your opponent if they're pressing. A very slow button. Oh yeah, that, that was the most ambiguous of the cross-ups is when Hellboy gets you in the corner and starts doing that stuff. That's the dirt. Speaking of ambiguous, look at that back three hitbox. I don't oh, yeah. know where it starts. I don't know where it ends. I feel like it hits everything on screen. If you take to the air you're against Hellboy, you're very uh, prone to getting hit by that back three. Even if he's not putting armor behind it, he just wants to do it. That back three is going to chase you down and it's going to hit you. Awesome. Now, I love how uh, Sonic Fox just walks up, puts some buttons in his face, and, and, and does the, the leap, but goes straight into the low, saying, hey, I want that first bar and I'm just going to take it. I'm not going to go for the big damage. I'm going to go for something small and get my meter. All right, putting it back again because Hellboy really only has that one wake up attack. Right. So it's either you bait the wake up or you don't bait the wake up. But I think Sonic Fox is kind of catching on to Theo's setup. He's like, okay, you're backing off. You're really far away from me. Obviously, you want me to wake up, so I'm not going to wake up. Right. 
It's all about doing and not doing what your opponent wants you to do. Yeah, and, and Theo getting, getting, blocking a button and him going straight into Leap and him just down to him immediately. He's trying some a different approach, definitely. All right, trying to chip away at Sonic Fox's health. Sonic Fox anticipating an air with that anti-air throw. But unfortunately for him, Theo has the patience of a god. Oh yeah, and, and, and Theo just whiff, punch, whiff punishing down once since he was in diapers, it seems like. Oh yeah, definitely. He's just been doing this for such a long time. You know, again, Theo, that type of player to wait for his opponent to open themselves up, wait for his opponents to hang themselves. And, you know, he's okay with, with taking a back seat and just, just waiting it out, especially in a game like Injustice 2 where, you know, we could ever see any timeouts. The, the, the timer is so long. Yeah, at I've 240 never seen a seconds. Timeout. Even with uh, uh, the double dead shot mirror, you can see it. Right, how about Sub Zero mirrors? Are you going to see it there? I, I, I have you never seen it. a Sub Zero mirror. <laughs> <laughs> you got to see it in the Sub Zero mirrors. We need but, Tom and Buffalo to come up here. There we go. Instead of once and for all. Oh, yes. Who is the worst of zero? <laughs> right. The down two, not letting Sonic Fox get frisky in the air or look for any kind of potential setups, potential super jump ins. Oh, just jumps in. Sonic Fox you tried to hit a button. Snowball's chance in hell. My whole life defies the odds. All right, two bars to three bars. Sonic Fox getting the edge on Theo slightly by one. So I, I think it was a good idea that he, he bet the insurance right oh, yeah. there, the insurance meter. And right now, yeah. Theo could potentially find himself at a, a light, at, at a meter deficit if Sonic Fox does force a clash very soon. Oh, that should have been punished. Oh, that back one ice breath. Theo decides to spend his one and only bar to extend the combo. Sonic Fox jumping around and Theo being so patient. Too scared to even down two. Oh, he did not go with the revive. He went straight with the, I believe that was the uh, less damage taken. Now, now was that an execution error or did, did, was he going for something else and Theo recognized right. like right away because that was really fast. Did Theo recognize right away that's not the revive. I'm gonna hit him. Right. Uh, because you do get, Supergirl. you know, decent amount back. Manta. Are we back on the Fortress Black Manta campaign? Can we talk about this? Oh yes. I actually like this character and I like this matchup myself because both the players are like gods and neutral. Or both the characters are gods and neutral. So. Yeah. Both these characters have such great, long-reaching normals. You can see right there as Black Manta leaps at you uh, to hit you with his knife with a dagger in his hand, and Supergirl, of course, having her uh, her back her back one, uh, and, and all her great ranging moves right there. Ooh, look at that, the, the laser pressure is something that Black Man excels at. He doesn't, does not need to open you up, he just wants you to block and take this damage. Yeah, he wants you to block because it, it's, it's chipping away at you, but it's also building you so much meter. I mean, obviously he's gonna put more damage on the board if, you're letting him hit you, but that's not really his main concern. His main concern here is really to just chip away at you and control the neutral the best he can. And, and that's why Sonic Fox thinks that this character is one of the best. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about Sonic Fox's defense right there. He was just holding back, waiting for his time to hit a button and take that last bit of life. You're saying he outpatient Theo? Outpatient him. Yes, sir. <laughs> outpatient him. That's usually what Theo is the best at, but I don't think Theo is going to take this line down. I'm not sure if we're going to see like a character switch maybe to Superman, but you know, I've seen nothing but Supergirl from Theo all day. It definitely could happen. Every time Theo dashes in, he's getting met with a down one laser. Down one laser that he's choosing not to meter burn. He'd rather spend the resources on chipping you out when you block it or for anything else, for flip outs. It's just not worth it to him. Oh, yeah. What's the setup? He's gonna back off. He's gonna back off, but Sonic, I'm not sure what Dio was trying to do there. He was trying to do anything but block. Oh, and yeah. Sonic Fox ran away with that game. Oh, that was a quick one, too. Black Manta wins. A quick and decisive game three, Ooh, and on, Dio immediately Begin. going right into it. I don't like this decision at all. I never like it when I see it. I never see it pan out well for anybody. You definitely need, we're all human. We need time to think and just realize what is going on. 
Hits him with the computer there. Trades that Sonic Fox is totally okay with. Ooh, Sonic <laughs> punches in his face. He's like, look, man, you got to make me stop doing this. So I'm just going to keep doing it. He's going to keep lasering there, usually where you see a gap in Black Man is strength. So he's not giving Theo an opportunity to really interrupt. Maybe that's what Theo's used to doing whenever he runs into a Black Manda, but Sonic Fox has a backup for your for your counter. Oh yeah. He's going to do the thing that you don't think he's going to do the most. Yeah, no, that's definitely what it is. And just putting hands all over him, building so much bar that he's just going to keep spending for chipping him out. And unfortunately, Theo still has this one little pixel. How far can he take it? He knew blocking wasn't an option, so he backdashed. Smart move there by Theo, but Sonic Fox not far behind, hunting him down, chasing him all the way across the Fortress of Solitude. Oh, yeah. And Sonic Fox's defense is impregnable right now. I, I, I have no idea how he's opening them up again. <laughs> as soon as you said that, he got Mollywop hit for a full combo there, especially with that background bounce. All right, he does not meter burn that. Sonic Fox did not get punished for that. Tried to go for a teleport, but got met with Supergirl's marvelous buttons. Oh man, those marvelous buttons, those are the whiff punishing queens. Oh yeah. Those, those legs, those limbs of Supergirl. You don't want to jump in on her and miss. You do not. If you're going to press that button after you jump in, you better make sure it makes contact. Oh, yeah. No doubt about that. Sonic Fox just keeps giving them these float cancel pressure. And again, I love Sonic Fox's attention to detail, him being able to hit and block confirm those lasers and only meter burning when she blocks them. Well, the chip damage is adding up. It is, and look, he's... How much meter has he spent on, on meter burning that laser? And look, he's still going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Theo's meter. Oh, yeah. It just keeps getting more and more meter every time Theo blocks. Ooh. Sonic. This won't be catch and release. I'm going to prove you wrong. Sonic flashing immediately, and he had an extra bar. We got fishing jokes? Really? Oh, yeah. We got <laughs> fishing jokes? No, but uh, I, that's the, definitely the, the main attribute to Black Mana, and what I, I feel like people are overlooking uh, in this character is how much meter he builds. Oh, yeah. And how he can just always keep himself in a meter building situation. Theo putting him down. What is going to be the guess here? Goes to the other side. I thought I was so sure it went to the other side. Oh, Sonic man. Fox was so sure it went to the other side, but I did not see a cross up indicator there as Sonic Fox gets opened up for the last time in that game. What a crucial opportunity for him to block, and he just didn't guess right. Oh man, both players on game Begin. point right now. What's going to happen? Echo Fox team kill. This could definitely be here, but this is uh, winner's finals, so, you know, the loser will move on to fight the winner of Dragon versus Forever King, so that won't be the end of it. I'm really glad that this winner's finals is such a nail-biter here. Sonic Fox going with a hard knockdown there, putting Theo in the corner, and Theo just fights his way out, meeting the fist straight to Black Manta's chest. And I don't like that back throw. I feel like that might have been an execution error there by Sonic Fox. I don't see a reason for him to, to give Supergirl all this real estate or give her access to a background bounce where she can really, really hurt you. Yeah, yeah, she definitely can do some damage there. Off of a low, especially. Okay. I, I don't know what that decision there was. Theo usually not the type to go for those, you know, those gut instinct wake ups. You know, oh, yeah. he, he's more about I will block or I will look for the guaranteed wake up. When you're right over me, I'll go for the uppercut. Absolutely. Sonic Fox punishing the Everyone ice breath. Earth is friendly? Choke on a harpoon. Just loves the fish talk. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He <laughs> loves choking on a harpoon. Don't do that. <laughs> goes for Now, he goes for one bar. Very smart of Theo. He he anticipated Sonic Fox not to bet anything that time. Right. So, you know, he might have overextended just a little bit, but he did not want to get hurt. He basically was, that was his one bar of insurance uh, to prevent Sonic Fox from spending his bar. And, you know, Sonic Fox is like, you know what? I'll hold on to this bar because... I am doing so much chip damage to you. I'm not letting you get away this time. Oh, yeah. And Theo not able to anti-air uh, his jump three. is just so far away, and then the trade is just horrible on, uh, if he were to trade with himself. And right there, Theo going correct, uh, uh, rectifying the situation where Sonic Fox did like to challenge in that, in that very same spot, thinking that Theo would not meter burn the, the breath to kind of hold on to the meter. 
uh, for the scramble, uh, but Theo just kind of gave him the meter burn, froze him, and continued the combo. But it's going to take way more reads than that to make this comeback. If Sonic Fox even leaves him alive, he definitely does not after he easily chips him out there. Uh, really, Theo's only option in that situation was to go for the wake-up uppercut, which would have whiffed cleanly on him, or to go for the teleport, which has no invincibility. So Sonic Fox really understanding how to keep Supergirl down on wake-up, knowing exactly where he needs to be to avoid the uppercut and to still stop the teleport away. Oh, yeah. And that, that was pretty much all she wrote. As soon as he hit him with that combo, it was done. Oh, yeah. We talk about Scarecrow's lockdown to game in the corner. Black Manta's lockdown game, game is scary as well. I mean, it's, I think it's more just about chipping him out. And this is Theo putting Sonic Fox into the corner. And that very ambiguous stuff, I was so sure it was going to cross up the way he kind of hovered there. And I feel like Theo disguised it very well, where it kind of almost looked like a drop. Right. Like, And usually when people see their opponent drop a combo on them, that's the that, that, that's the second they want to get aggressive. That's the second they say, let me tech roll, let me get up as fast as possible and press a button. Let me do a wake-up attack because he messed up. So there's no way he knows his timing. And Theo just kind of went up to the air, didn't know which side he was on, and just opened him up for free. Right, uh, Taking it all the way to game five. All right, guys. So we're getting a little bit closer to the end of the tournament. Just wanted to remind you guys, all 5,000 of you here, thanks for watching. Um, check that link in um, the chat I just pasted via Mubot and uh, contribute to the Manchurino for uh, Injustice 2. You can sign in with your Twitch TV name or whatever platform you want, like Twitter, Facebook, Google. You can donate a dollar for free using the promo code NEC at checkout. And uh, any items purchased here in the store uh, do increase the uh, prize pool. So uh, thank you guys uh, so much for your support. And shout out to the donors that have uh, donated to this pot so far. Tekken is over, but you can still use promo codes for that as well. Promo code for that page is uh, NEC2018. All right, up next, real fast, I shout out the rest of the sponsors. Um, Volksattack.com, 20% off if you enter the code NEC18 at checkout. It's 15% off this weekend, but you put in that promo code, you get even more. A pretty good deal. Be sure to check them out. Um, ADARC.com, 10% off site wide. Code NECXVIII. It's valid until the 19th. Be sure to check him out at uh, adark.com. Up next, um, Go For Broke Winter Championships. That's January 13th to the 14th in Atlantic City. NerdStreetGamers.com. Um, MVCI, Street Fighter 5, Tekken 7. Uh, Controller Chaos having a sale. You can save 10% off the coupon code NEC at checkout. ControllerChaos.com. And last but not least. We have Dynamic, uh, Dynamic Custom View Works. Be sure to check them out at dynamicviewworks.com and check out their stream on Twitch as well. All right, back to you guys. All right, thanks Arturo. Here we have Forever King going up against Dragon. Now Dragon, I feel like, is the best at blocking Batman. So I think we're gonna see a lot of defense, a lot of Batman struggle to get in and open you up. I'm glad Kara yes, proved yes. incorruptible. She's a fool to deny her power. She's smart and begin. Uh -huh, uh, really he cut it off. That. He didn't mean to. He was adjusting his chair and he kind of just pressed a button on his controller by mistake. No, but King, all right, so, you know, King's main reason about, you know, why he doesn't feel that Batman was as strong as a lot of other players would say is his main reason for that. His main argument, his go-to thing to throw at you is for him to say, Watch Dragon block Batman. If you can't <laughs> block Dragon, if you can't block like Dragon, then you don't know the matchup. Right. If you can sit there and block just like Dragon, you will never lose to Batman. And I'm actually surprised that he's you going with Batman here. Oh, yeah, he's going sticking with his guns, man. He loves Batman. He is Batman. Dangerously deluded. Begin. Dragon backing off, looking for the trash can throw here. And he's just kind of baiting Forever King to use those mechanical bats. Uh, and now, oh, he out neutraled him right there with that standing one beating Dragon cleanly there. And the stand 1-1. One, one. King going for a lot of staggers here. And maybe he's finding that Dragon does rely a lot on the fact that he's anticipating full strength to complete, or at least complete, you know, to how most Batman players do. Right. You know, they usually don't do just stand 1 or 1-1. One, one. Uh, they usually finish it by going 1-2 two or 2-2. Two, two. Or trade cancel, something, some of the sort. Yeah, no, and 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 
maybe King figures something out in this matchup. And not the matchup against Black Adam, but the matchup against Dragon. Dragon himself. Dragon just walking back. Knows he has a mechanical bat at his disposal. Gets opened up trying to forward one. And look at all the bar that King has versus uh, Black Adam's no bar here. Uses it just to use that up battering. Now that up battering has no invincibility, but it comes out so quickly and has so much block stun that it's it's a great option that you really don't want to overlook if you're playing a Batman. Right, and now in this match alone, this this one match, Dragon has already blocked two back two slides. Back two slide, hey, it's fuzzyable. All you gotta do is take it to practice. The timing's a little strict, but it is possible. Oh yeah, and I love it, that, that, that's the signature Dragon. Backdashing there right after the back 1-1 one, one from Batman. I want to see King anticipate and adapt and possibly just throw out something like back 1-1 one, one grapple just to catch the backdash and stop Dragon from getting out of his pressure for free. Ooh, just walking back, playing footsies with lightning hands. Going for the Batarang, ba and uh, Dragon not opting to backdash in that little tiny gap. Would a seventh god help? Aton, give me strength. I think Batman's just kind of making fun of his religion. Oh, yeah. I don't think that's cool. Yeah. Black Adam just totally ignoring him, too, and just <laughs> saying him. whatever he wants to yeah. say. That's like when Batman ignores whatever you want to say. He just says, I'm Batman. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? I'm Batman. <laughs> you said, I'm Batman. Just letting him jump in for free as King just patiently awaiting for Dragon to press a button, maybe looking for forward one here. Dragon not giving it to him. Dragon's got Clash. He's, you know, he's completely content letting King build up that that, that bat, the trait bat. Why is this the inevitable? I'm Batman. <laughs> that's, his, that's his go to. I'm Batman. That's his. Uh, completely content with letting King build up those bats, but he did kind of have to cash in his Clash uh, just to stop the combo and stop the, the possible momentum that Forever King had right there. The back two. It's a low lightning meter bird. Does so much damage. Goes completely interrupted there as Batman not waiting for you to complete your strings. Instead, just going to meet you in the face with his palms. Oh, King opens him up. Oh, punishes the back tech. He's going to try to do as much damage as he can. Trying to do as much damage as he can. Trying to open him up there with the forward three. But, you know, like we said, Dragon is godlike at blocking Batman and he is also godlike in a very clutch situation there. It, it was do or die, and it all and, and King just bet it all. He bet the entire farm on the fact that Dragon would not stand up for this overhead forward three. Oh man. And he just did easily. No sweat. And I can't believe how composed these two guys are, are, are remaining here and in such a tense situation. Oh yeah. Dragon just playing this game nice and slow at the pace exactly that he wants to play at. And King just trying to shove it in his face and push him in the corner. Peter Burn forward three and Dragon decides to push block. Doesn't want anything to do with the, that, the plus seven after forward three from Batman. All right, both players just playing neutral. King slowly trying to push him back into the corner. Oh, looking for the Dragon special there, but King does block correctly, wasn't pressing a button. He just unfortunately did not, he, he just wasn't ready to punish it. Meter burn forward three right through the Palpatine as Black Adam desperately tries to get his fingertips on Batman. Oh, EX Lightning with punishing this line, that's like a mini bread and butter on hit as well. And I love, I love the swag there on that charge to back three. It doesn't add anything, it doesn't do anything to, to the move, but it just looks so pretty every single time I see it. Oh, he's trying to, trying really? to read his dashes. He's crazy. He said, <laughs> he said he blocked this black magic. Let me try it again. <laughs> he blocked it again. But this time it was in my face and close enough for him to punish me. Forever King getting real dangerous with that 1-1-3. One, one, there is a gap there that, that I feel like Dragon's getting ready to meter burn back 3-2. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Forever King might want to think twice about doing it. Uh, in all those, in, at least in a, in a predictable situation. Oh, he went for the cross up mix up. Very ambiguous jump. Aton, you will die. Not the god of wishful thinking. Oh my goodness. Batman arrogant as ever. Billionaire Bruce. <laughs> the god of wishful thinking. All right, Dragon ready to get his hands on him just so he can cancel into that character power and abuse those plus frames. Catch King respecting them. 
and hitting him with a forward three there and back to back throws. But Forever King finding his way, finding his own footing here. Dragon not getting opened up by the overhead there in the back two, three. Does get hit there, and the conversion there after the parry because of the mechanical bat, but Dragon precisely timing that, that air escape there in order to punish King on his recovery frames. King knowing every one of Batman's three forward threes. That's how much Dragon is respecting Forever King right now. He is not challenging or looking to disrespect him when he's plus. Oh my Still goodness. trying to kill me. For conduct, I will prevail. King does have one bar, and he decides to spend it 15% back. A little bit more wiggle room here. Dragon dashing up for the throw, and King says, no, get off me. Anti-air mechanical bat. Not sure why he didn't go with the down two. I thought that was a clean opening here. That's going to chip out, but it's not going to be enough. Dragon still has his trade out and act. Okay, it's out. It's activated. King needs to keep him away. He needs to hurt him somehow without getting anywhere near him. He's looking for the jump. Oh my lord, Dragon baited out his jump in and hit him with the dive kick to the dome. King just going in there, spacing it out perfectly, saying anti-air battery, anti-air battery, for the love of God, Dragon, please jump into this anti-air battery. And Dragon just saying, Okay, I'm cool. I don't have to go to you. Even when he didn't have trait, he still just kept his cool. Oh yeah, he just held down back and played defense. Oh, right into the corner. And the bomb setup does work as Dragon was trying to, to stuff it completely. Uh, unfortunately, a little bit of a miscalculation there on the timing does make him hit the raw end of that, batter, uh, of that interactable. But it's okay, Dragon is in complete control here as Forever King trying to make up this life deficit. The slide, the raw slide does hit him. Not sure if Dragon was trying to walk back or walk forward. He was trying to do anything but watch his toes. Oh man, Dragon's just respecting him and trying to get his damage whenever there's a, a solid opening when he's guaranteed it. Not sure, baby. He was looking for that back two slide. Forever King didn't give it to him. The one time you look for back two slide, as long as he's got a mechanical pat, it's gonna hurt. Oh yeah. Let's see what Dragon can do. Let's see if he can keep holding back and keep Batman in the position where, you know, he doesn't want to walk in unless he gets that bat. All right. Oh, Ooh. Ghost flips out. Not sure if that was a punish. I believe it was. I saw the punish icon light up right there. And, you know, the grapple has so much recovery there. And that's really when uh, high-level players such as Dragon will look to air escape out, especially a uh, low air escape out or yes. a down air escape out so they can punish him before he recovers from retracting that grapple back into his gun. Oh yeah, trying to finish the combo, trying to get him to with a restand and end up paying the price for it. Yeah, he paid the price because he tried to use his reactions to identify a throw and Dragon just perfectly shimmying it, perfectly manipulating uh, Forever King there in that situation. Oh yeah, and Dragon literally just playing defense, just waiting for King to throw the first punch and saying that, hey, I can throw the haymaker to knock you out. Oh, do not backdash on Batman when he's in jump two you're range. Just don't do it. Winning. Unless you're Catwoman and you really get away for free, do not do it. That jump two reaches way farther than you think it does. Ooh, nice jump over the lightning to get the punish. And Dragon not anticipating that that ambiguous jump in arc that is Batman's jump two. They might have reduced the hit stun and the hitbox slightly, but it's still a great jump in attack. Ooh, he got another clean jump in right as Dragon went for a low lightning. King does not hit him with the grappling hook, does not finish that. Yeah, not sure why he, he he didn't continue the combo. Dragon has nothing left. He's got no he's got no clash. All he had was meter. Oh yeah. I believe he was trying to bait out the grapple, but he ended up dying for it, trying to make too many reads. Now do you think do you think he King was so frustrated at that point because normally and even in that same game, Dragon was air escaping out perfectly during those combos. As soon as he saw down two. I mean, maybe Dragon was reacting to the grapple, or maybe Dragon just had the right read on him. But mm -hmm. as soon as King would go for the end of his combo, down two into the grapple for the, you know, the shenanigans, the, right. the Batman 50-50 vortex, every time that grapple came out, Dragon air escaped, landed, 
and punished him correctly. And I guess that last time, you're right. I think I think King was looking for that, so he's trying to bait it out, trying to test re Dragon's reactions to see, okay, is he reacting to the down two before grapple, or is he actually reacting to the grapple, or is he just like God at making those reads, the right, right guesses, right at the right times? Oh man, we're not gonna know. Maybe we'll find out next time these two guys duke it out. But River King's gonna be going with a very impressive fourth place as Dragon moves on to the losers finals, the lower bracket finals. For He's the gonna, run back. Yeah, for the run back. And how many times have we had to say that between Dragon and Theo, man? They always seem to meet each other in the fourth or the third place and hey. seated players. They don't yeah. meet each other till the end. And these are Dr. Fate. two very, very consistent players. Uh, them not making it out of the pools would be a huge blow up. Them not making top four yeah. would be a huge blow up. Absolutely. I, I, I would definitely not expect that. If I were to see a bracket, empty bracket, and I see the players' names, and I, for me to mold and project the, who's going to win and, and what that, I would definitely have them in the up same there. spot they're at right now. Up there, up there. No big surprises here today. Again. Nothing too crazy to note on. But high-level play. Either way, because yeah, absolutely. and right now I'm getting chills because I, I'm hearing some fate noises and I want to see more and more of Dragons Doctor Fate. I was very impressed and that just that one game, that one game he had against White Boy, when all signs were pointing to his demise. All signs were pointing to you are done. You're in the corner. You're at an 80% life deficit. Like Scarecrow's got you, and this is the best Scarecrow in the business. This is right. White Boy. And Dragon was still somehow, and Dragon's Dr. Fate was somehow able to get out of that situation. Uh, now that's probably a favorable matchup for Dr. Fate, especially because he does zone out. And when you have the reactions and the anticipations and the reads of Dragon, you can kind of see when Scarecrow is gonna, you know, teleport out and you punish correctly. Right, right, right. And he definitely has the character knowledge, man. This kid has been, I mean, he's the he's an Injustice 2 champion. This guy grinds the game for countless hours a day. I'm not gonna put a number on it because he's probably gonna tell me, hey, Grills, you were wrong, I do it more. <laughs> he won't admit that. <laughs> it's like, I, I, yeah, I play this game sometimes. But guys, check out this replay here again. This is Forever King looking for something, finds that nice ambiguous uh, jump in and baiting out the air escape there. This is pretty much, looks like this is all said and done, but somehow right there, Dragon found a way out, just kept his composure, turned on his character power and just waited for King to open himself up as Dragon usually does. And here again, another nail biter of a match. Every single match, what a great set. This is a set I'm gonna remember for a very long time there. And Dragon doing such a great job of blocking everything, blocking everything that Forever King throws at him. Looking to force something here. Does King force the clash here in a very scrambly situation that happens after King gets 15% back. These guys are going toe to toe. Trade is out, trade is out for both players. And King thought he had it there, overextended, tries to get back, tries to build a little bit of real estate here. And look at Dragon, he's totally okay even look king looking for that anti-air battering he said please jump please jump i know you're going for jumping a uh, jumping dive and right at the perfect moment dragon saw his opening and went in for instant foot dive played it per <coughs> excuse me just played it perfectly perfectly Begin. right there by the book here and now these guys going at it again the rub back but this time dragon's got a new a new character in his hands. This is Dr. Fate. Again, very impressed by this Dr. Fate play, and I'm expecting to see a much closer game. Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, Dragon controls a lot more of the neutral in this match, um, and maybe Theo doesn't really fight too many Dr. Fates. We, we don't know. We know that he plays the character himself, though. Yeah, no, oh yeah, Theo putting it in, uh, putting in his time with a lot of different characters, and so Theo should be familiar with with how a Dr. Fate should play. But, you know, this is Dragon. This is the man with an impeccable, impeccable amount of patience and defense. <laughs> Blocking every single attempt for a fake overhead and keeping his composure here. Now, Supergirl does not have any initial hitting strings that start with overhead. So 
you know, block low until she gives you a reason not to block low anymore. And that's really Dragon's strategy here. And Dragon off to a great start as he takes the first bar over Theo. Oh, yeah. And now he has the meter to actually put some damage from far away. It's just crazy. When, when, when Dr. Fate has meter, the whole matchup could change. Oh, yeah. Not only just meter, but that character power scares the living daylights out of me. Oh, yeah. uh, it changes so much about his special moves properties. It changes the frame data, it changes the combo ability, and it just kind of it keeps me just shocked, and I don't want to hit the wrong end of any of those special moves. Oh, yeah, and, and then to top it off, he gains the damage buff to his projectiles, making them hit like uppercuts. They, they hit hard, and he's also way less... weakens your power. I'm gonna prove you wrong. He is way less minus than he normally is with his projectiles. He recovers way faster after each one of them as long as that trade is active and those projectiles are red. Uh, Supergirl's uh, character power works a little bit differently, kind of just giving her an extra set of laser moves there. Laser moves that she does eventually run out of, but because we are here close to a yellow sun, she does recharge very slowly. And, uh, you know, she can spend all her meter just like that with a walking laser. Oh, Dragon, as soon as he frees himself, able to get out, he just jumps out and puts him in a combo, and now he's on the end of offense. Woo! I'm not sure. I don't think that punished at all. I think Dragon was trying to do anything but just block. He wanted to get away from the situation, and he's waiting for Theo to hang himself, and Theo being so patient here. And it was Dragon's game. He started off so strong. And, and he knows it came down to just one or two bad reads. I don't think he's going to be straying away from this character. I do not. There, there's no way. It didn't work. It just didn't work with Black Adam. All they right. might have been close matches, but, you know, Theo had too much of an understanding of it. And I guess that was actually Theo calling for a pause there because Sonic Fox, again, you know, how Hollywood and uh, that is pure luxury. Oh, yeah. Being able to win a match and then get coached after. Oh, yeah. You just you always have everything just at your disposal, especially the coaching of the man sitting in the grand final. Yep, and, and Sonic Fox is the man to be in, sitting in winner's finals. Yep. Going back with the statue there, getting Supergirl off of him. Now that statue is no longer in play, so next time somebody gets caught in that corner, it's going to be a little bit more uh, oppressive, a little bit more restricting to your movement as you don't have the option in that interactable. Now Dragon putting that six frame button in the middle of the hole. But Theo just opening him up with a teleport and getting him in this corner for that big 515 damage. Dragon giving him a wake up, trying to keep himself safe here, making and forcing Supergirl to charge towards that orb. Uh, not enough to take that first bar. And Theo ba baiting out perfectly that anti-air attempt by Dr. Fate. Now that does look like a special move, but it's actually normal when he summons the, that magic straight from the from the floor. Oh yeah, it's, it's definitely a fast mid as well. Yeah. So it, it, it's really easy to get frustrated by, you know, mindlessly jumping in on Dr. Fate. You need to be very careful. You need to understand when he's trying to zone you out and understand when he's ready and willing to accept you as, okay, you got in, now I need to keep you out as my last line of defense. All right. So we got Dragon still in the corner. Theo hopping over the orb, opening him up. As if. Yeah, so Supergirl's, Supergirl's access to an air dash really helps her a lot in this matchup. Let's her get over those orbs just like in that situation, but it might be a... a, a uh, a telling way for Dragon to anticipate a jump in, knowing that, okay, she has the option to dash in. That means she's going to be jumping in way sooner than other characters. All right, close to death. Dragon sitting in the corner. He had to eat the block on that laser. Perfect air to air. Air to air right there. Perfectly anticipated by Theo. Not sure, probably even before he left the sky, before yeah. he left the ground and took to the sky. Dr. He said to himself, he's going to jump. So Super I'm going with my, my fastest jumping one button. Yep, just like a chess pair. Always got to stay a couple moves ahead. Yeah. So again, Dragon not straying away from Dr. Fate. He gave Black Adam a try in that first set. Now it's time to kind of work on Dr. Fate. And, uh, what, you know, what a stage to really put your newly acquired character to the test. Uh, and what an opponent to do it against. Theo, right. again, one of the most consistent, dominant players out there. 
stuck in the interactables here. Throwing out the orbs, and again, Supergirl getting right over them and continuing the pressure. I think Dragon needs to possibly stray away from these orbs just for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Just keep shoving them into the corner, and Dragon just playing defense, but he keeps just getting pounded on and opened up. All right, what's the mix-up going to be? Is he going to give him the opportunity to wake up? Goes for the delay wake up, but Theo not guessing right on how Dragon's going to be blocking. Dragon doing an amazing job here, just keeping his composure, keeping his defense up. Anti-air. Did not get punished on that, uh, that breath. Oh, Dragon goes from a respectful, a respectful player to a disrespectful player as he looks for Theo to open himself up there. Now, Dragon has that orb back there. Maybe he was just looking to backdash to try to bait him into the orb. Or now he's finally got his back away from the corner so he can make this work. Oh, the teleport, teleport does work. It doesn't hit as an overhead if it's not meter burn, but it also means no combos for Supergirl. Looking for her to go in there. Instead, just points her out. Oh, yeah. Points Dragon her out. Looking for that anti-air. Dragon trying to jump out there in that situation. And Theo doing a great job of spacing that wake up. Uh, whenever you see that symbol, that symbol, when he forces the opponent to block, he's pretty much safe. You need to make it whiff. And that's what Theo was looking for. He's looking for that perfect space just outside of that symbol's range. Oh, yeah. And Theo trading the laser with a uh, uh, meter burn... Uh, Fireball from Dr. Fate. That's definitely what you want to do because if we trade that, it's in your favor because all three orbs needs to hit you to, to get the max damage for Dr. Fate. Yeah, all three of the orbs. I mean, that, that's that's optimal. That's ideal. Uh, and you know, you take so much advantage right after uh, after it successfully hits. You can just kind of keep going into more and more zoning. Backdashing there now. Dr. Fate does disappear slightly whenever you see him. Uh, dashing backward, dashing forward, but I promise you, he is still there and you can still hit him out of a lot of things. Oh yeah. Dragon now trying to get the advantage. Finally has the health lead back. Can Dragon make this comeback? Hold on, he's got Theo in the corner here. Theo decides to wake up with the teleport. Doesn't meter burn and unfortunately, he could have applied a lot of unclashable damage had he realized that it was going to connect. Oh yeah, that, that 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 was savage at anything less. It was just super savage. Dragon finally taking one game. Now he's down 2-1. I mean, if, and if you want to count the set in uh, in winner semis, he's, he's down 5-1. Oh, 5-1, yeah. So finally he got a game. Let's After see five if that straight wins. Things. Oh yeah, but let's see, Theo went straight to Superman. He's like, hey, he with Dr. Fate. I'm just gonna 4-2-3 you now to Oblivion, boy. I mean, Superman does have a lot of great things that, you know, that was helping Theo out in, the, in that last game. Superman also has access to an air dash. Again, a great way to kind of just move in on your opponent. But uh, Superman's lasers act a little bit different than Supergirl's. Instead of them coming straight at you, they kind of sweep the area around you but they build him way more bar and they inflict way more chip if he decides to meter burn on contact. Oh yeah, and then this corner game is definitely something sad. Oh man, oh, man does Superman hurt. I mean, he's Superman, he's gotta hurt. Saying savage a lot. Shout out to Mr. Aquaman, that man's savage. That man is savage. He's the most savage of them all. Big oh, shout yeah. out to Aquaman, big shout out to War of the Gods. Ooh, nice anti-air with the floor too. Nice juggle at the end to get the extra damage too. On the forward two, three breath game, and Dragon out of his mind challenges when Theo cancels into the trade. He is so plus after that, but Theo just wasn't waiting for it. He wasn't anticipating. He didn't think that Dragon was to this point. But when you when you when you cage a lion, he's gonna do crazy things. Oh yeah. Ooh, nice dash up anti air. Did not think he was gonna have the time to actually hit that button. He was able to pull it off here, and Theo with a forward two and three, and with that frost breath, it is enough to continue the combo and take out that first bar. Uh, Theo not too far behind, but Dr. Fate's got way more meter than he does, way more options, uh, you know, for push block, meter burn rolls, or even air escapes. Oh yeah, he's patiently waiting. He, he wants his in. As soon as he gets his in, it's like he's trying to chop 
down the tree right now as well, trying to trade the big projectile with the little projectile. You know, he is. And, you know, that trade is, is definitely slightly in Theo's play, uh, favor, not just fr from the damage, but from the fact that it knocks Dr. Fate down and, and it doesn't knock Superman down. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, this is going to hurt. Never mind. Dragon changing gears here. Uh, I think he needs to find solace in the fact that Theo is out of meter. So his full screen options are a little bit worse now. All right, now he's got one bar. He's got to make Theo waste it here. Now what situation is he going to make it waste it in? Oh, yeah, both players having Clash, so if things get sticky and somebody gets opened up, expect a Clash to be forced upon. Again, Theo does not have meter. He's trying to build it with that high laser. It makes contact and builds him so much bar, plus inflicting so much damage and a hit advantage. Ooh, Dragon trying to EX roll under that laser. Gets hit in the head with that. And now he's sent home by Theo. Now, right there, that last play, that last laser to leave Superman's eyes, Dragon possibly anticipating a sweeping laser uh, because he was down to almost nothing. So in his head, he was like, okay, Theo is going to go for the sweeping laser because it can cover more ground. The heat zap that Theo was doing throughout most of that game, or at least throughout most of that scramble at the end, that heat zap can be ducked under. Uh, it does a lot of damage, and if you make contact with it, you're building Superman a lot of meter. Uh, but it is very slow, right. and again, travels. You can kind of see it travel through the screen. Not super fast, not as fast as yeah. a gunshot, but... Faster than his sweeping laser. Yeah, so so what Dragon was, was looking for there is, you know, everything, all the signs pointed to sweeping laser, but it just wasn't it. And here it is, Dragon again with Dr. Fate deciding to flip out, unfortunately... I, I feel like he should have been able to block there in that situation, but Dragon just didn't want anything to do with the pressure. And having Supergirl in the corner, perfectly baiting her out and modifying the combo enough that Supergirl did not have any room to air escape out of there because that was Theo's only choice. You know, Clash was already spent. He had two bars. He could air escape. Dragon said, I'm just going to keep you low to the ground. Oh, yeah. And, and finish it off. Um, that's, that's very important. Uh, being aware of all your opponent's active options. You know, you, you got to be aware when your opponent still has Clash. You got to be aware of your opponent's meter, which tells you, you know, what they have as an option, whether they can meter burn roll as a defensive move right. or an offensive move, uh, or if they're going for an air escape. We saw the mind games in, you know, air escape or not air escape in Dragon versus Forever King. And it really comes down, and it really comes down to, to seeing it. You have to see everything in this game. You have to see the life bars at the top. You have to see the meter being built down at the bottom. And, and in a lot of matchups, you got to look at the character power progression there at the bottom. So you're looking at six different things, all while trying to execute precise combos that you can instantly drop, all while money's on the line. People are oh, yeah. screaming in the in the stands. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it's so crazy here. It is. All right, so before we get to the grand final, it's going to run the uh, last series of uh, ads right now. First off, um, shout out to Dynamic Beeworks on AdBeeworks.com. Free shipping, no promo code needed. Shout out to Curtis. Go for broke, win a championship. Super January 13th Black through Manta. the uh, 15th. Fighters approaching um, NerdStreetGamers.com. Visit us now prize pool between Marvel, uh, Street Fighter, and uh, Tekken. Yeah, yeah, not yet, not yet. Um, save 10% off with uh, code NEC, uh, controllerchaos.com. Should check him out and show him some love. I like those NEC colors. Up next up, uh, Wamba, Adar's having a sale as well. You can save 10% off the coupon code NEC, XVIII. Balance to the 19th. You got the Dragon, the Obsidian, the Guardian, and the Aegis. Up next, uh, focusattack.com, 72 hours off. 70, 72 hours now until December 17th. 15% off and an extra 5% off at the code NEC18 at checkout. And that's at uh, focusattack.com. And this is going to be your last chance to uh, get the Matcherino in on the stream. Uh, promo code is linked in the chat. Click the link um, Click the link and type in coupon code NEC to donate a dollar for free with any of your social media platforms. And thanks to the people that have uh, donated already. One more time, Catalina, 50 bucks. This is Man, 48 bucks. Mike Metro, 21. Alan Walker 21 and Big JG $11. Thank you guys so much for your support and yeah, enjoy Grand Finals. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank you so much, Art. And a big shout out to all our sponsors. All right. And the run back here, the same thing we saw in Winners Finals. Not trying to dumb it down at all because this is high level play no matter uh -oh. how you look at it. Now, you know, Sonic Fox. 
was considered the best and still is to a lot of people. The Fox Boys, Come man. Me a little hot. Rick Fox is proud of his men. No right here in winners fi in grand finals Feeling together. You are not friendly. Begin. So we got Manta versus Supergirl. Let's see if we're gonna see that same bully match or we're gonna see something different where Theo could actually step up to the plate and knock down the Fox. I'm not sure, man. Sonic Fox looked a little too dominant in that last set between these two, so I don't really anticipate it to go in any other different direction. Like, what did Theo really learn in that time? The only advantage Theo might have is that he's a little bit more warmed up uh, by beating Dragon. Right. While Sonic Fox had to watch and coach him. <laughs> yep, definitely, definitely. Um, I wouldn't say it's a... Uh, uh, how, how do you say? I wouldn't say that's like... Uh, can't get the word. But anyway, I wouldn't say it's better, you know? <laughs> what, uh, sitting back? Uh, staying in losers yeah. and, and staying warm. But, I mean, because in winners, you, you got the leeway of, you know, be having to be reset, so. Yeah, no, you definitely have more tension on you. There's more pressure on you when you're in losers going up against somebody, and you have, you're going into it knowing that you need to not only beat them in one set, you need to beat them in two sets. Right. Uh, for those of you who don't know how double elimination brackets work, Think of it this way, you got two tournament lives, you lose your one life, you go into the lower bracket or the loser's bracket where you fight other players who are also down to one life. Every player has to lose two times to be out of the tournament. Sonic Fox is that one player here at our last match who has not lost a single set while Theo has lost his first life. Uh, I like the way Sonic Fox is, like you said earlier, he's baiting his wake up. He's literally hovering right outside of range. Perfect. Nothing that Supergirl can do. To, he can teleport, but guess what? He's just going to cancel it and punish you when he gets the ground. Yeah, so then he's just going to condition Supergirl to not do anything so that he could put his hands all over him, multiple hitting strings, and building more and more meter. Really, the, the, the main thing that I feel people overlook on Black Adam is his meter gain. Uh, how much he, he doesn't do too much damage, Your but he builds so much meter. Oh, yeah. Mance is definitely, definitely, definitely a, a high meter. Character. Yeah, and he's, you know, he he has so much mobility, he has the flight to get around a lot of zoning, and not only just the flight, but his instant teleport that can go into a combo, and when you have a player with such great reactions like Sonic Fox, he can really shut down zoning in an instance. Oh, yeah, and then also on the eyelids, you had to be completely ready to punish him. You're just off a little bit, or you think he's going to meter burn it, and then you hit it a second later, you're not going to get a punch. I mean, totally. Sonic Fox is saving all that meter for to, to, to avoid that situation altogether. Right. Because a player like Theo, when we saw it when he was playing up against Jupiter, he knew exactly Begin. when to press buttons. He knew exactly when to challenge things and when to get through gimmicks. Right. And so what you're seeing here is, is all true. There's no way Sonic Fox is leaving him any opportunity to punish anything. He is meter burning every time that it is crucial. Every time he needs to make it safe. Oh, just dashing around, trying to get his space. Trying to be very slippery so Supergirl can't get his palms on him. All right, Theo with the adjustment there, the forward three, because we are nice and close to the corner. Can he mix Sonic Fox up again here? Decides to back off and went for the guaranteed chip. Recognize that Sonic Fox was ready uh, to not wake up. Oh, yeah. And then he went for a forward advance like normal. Sonic Fox read that with a neutral jump and gave him some damage for it. All right, knock him down, down with the shoulder to the face here. But Sonic Fox lands those missiles, decides to go for the back three to extend the combo. And uh, he kind of takes the slight lead here in this match, but Theo is not far behind. <laughs> he was looking for a laser. He was looking for a laser so hard that Theo just didn't give it to him. Oh, yeah. Your madness stops here. A fool like you can't stop me. Now, Sonic Fox broke that throw and was able to live on that little pixel to inflict more damage on Theo. I don't understand how Sonic Fox was in the... How he had Theo in that, in that meter game. He forced the clash, had more meter than him, and actually punished him for it. Again, it all comes down to how much meter this character builds. Everybody's overlooking that. Oh, that, that was a hard to block. I, I did not know that he, he would cross up over there. Looking for something here. Theo challenging perfectly right after those lasers. What a block there by Sonic Fox, recognizing the, the static spacing of that air dash. 
Sonic not meter burning it on hit so he can stay with the plus frames and follow up with the, the forward two. Black Manta wins. The big mid that's half screen that you can't jump out of. It's a very, very good button. Yeah, Sonic Fox looking to run away with this cleanly now that Theo is the one that is his challenger. He is no longer coaching him. He is no longer giving him any tips. This is straight business, and this win is going to be Sonic Fox's. Ooh, Sonic Fox is playing a lot of neutral. Like, I, I love the whole neutral game that he's doing. He's going in, but then he's stepping back, and then he's just jumping in the air to catch anything that Theo's throwing out there. And right now, Sonic Fox has Theo too scared to press buttons on his wake-up, too scared to do anything. And Sonic Fox read it and, and telegraphed it perfectly by throwing him and keeping him in the corner. It's really hard to throw. Uh, High-level players, but if you condition them hard enough, they will be too scared to press buttons, oh, yeah. even when they feel like and know that a throw is coming. Sonic, just with the same lead, looking to take this tournament clean with the 3-0. I mean, there is not much to say about this. This is a mopping so far. Sonic Box in, in full control here. Black Mana doing everything he can, using every opportunity to just put hands on him. And Sonic Fox does have a super. Is he going to be teasing us with this? Are we going to see a super animation here before? Oh, yeah, he loves the we super. Call this it is a Half-Life super, so. Let's see. I, I, I'm not seeing any meter burns on those lasers. Uh, so Theo needs to make something going while Sonic Fox is underestimating his opponent. And I would even say slightly toying with him. Oh, yeah, because I think, I think Theo knows that. That's why he went straight for the punish right there. Exactly. He went for it. He, he did it. Super. He saw it connect. Uh, this is going to do a lot of damage, but this is not going to kill. But it doesn't matter. Sonic Fox right out the gate from here. He's going to ignore any kind of attempt for Theo to go into a clash animation, at least until he builds enough meter to meet his clash and not give him the opportunity to get any life back. Oh, yeah. Now Theo's going for every punish. He knows he's not going to meter burn. He's just doing it. He, yeah. He's recognizing it, seeing the holes. Uh, but it might be a little uh, too little too late. Oh, yeah. Especially he got the corner. He's in the corner. He's going to eat the chip. And once he does that, it's not his turn. Just straight lasers back and forth. Looking for the anti-air there with Theo. Theo, that jump in one. Instantly going in. What a drop. He wanted the transition, but just did back three a little too a little too late. Huge miscalculation and Sonic Fox. We'll take it. He takes oh it over man. Theo. What a little scramble there to kind of keep us on our toes. I thought I was seeing the, the, the makings of a potential comeback here, but Sonic Fox decides to take it here in his home, his home turf, oh, the hey. Northeast. Some, somebody, somebody just now during the grand finals was very generous. You see that ticket right now? Somebody just donated $333. Wow, oh, that man. is incredible. For, for, for justice, his name is Danis220, and he says fighting games are awesome. Oh man, thank more, you, Dennis. Yeah, well, what more can you say than that? You are way more awesome than you basically. You, you basically just say both of them. He donated two hundred thirty-three dollars for Tekken Two. <laughs> this guy just donated. Wow, this guy is godlike. <laughs> you, you are a god, my friend. Man, thank you so much. Yeah. We all love fighting games, man. We're all part of the community, no matter where you are. If you're live, you're sitting at home watching on Twitch, man. Th this is us. This, this is what we came to do. We love doing this, and we're not gonna stop anytime soon. So. <laughs> That neutral, blah, blah, blah. I forget how to say it, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that, that is what it is. It, there's so much of a community effort throughout all of fighting game uh, in this community, especially because we are such a niche genre, and we have so much more to grow, and there's so much potential oh, yeah. here, and just so much love. You know, Guido was saying it before. A lot of people are forgetting the reason why we do this. It, it's not for, you know, any kind of pop bonus or any kind of you know recognition it's, it's because you love it because you love being in that situation next to your opponent where you have to outthink him you have to outclass him you have to out execute him and right now we're seeing the uh the award all right no ne never mind we're going right into a replay here again sonic fox just lasering and chipping away at theo theo just lost completely here in this matchup. Not sure how to deal with the character that builds you so much meter, uh, meter that he spends right away for these flashy supers or more realistically for uh, chipping out after lasers. And he does so much chip damage. There's a, so much blocking there by Theo, but it's, it's just you take so much of a toll on and on. Like, yeah, you can only block so much too. Yeah, no, you definitely, you gotta hold that. and. 
you know, towards the end, Sonic Fox had Theo's tendencies down to a T, throwing him in all the right spots, keeping him in the corner, and, you know, having enough wiggle room and enough of a life lead and meter lead to go for a super for no reason. That super did not serve him anything. No. He, he easily won in the first two games, and then the third game, all right, let's have a little fun. But that's how Sonic Fox is. And uh, that's what's kind of fun about rooting against him, is you yeah. want to see him taken down. So every yeah. time Sonic Fox is defeated, it is a great thing to see. Yeah, because we're, we're, we're all human. There's no such thing as the God. So if you see somebody winning and you think you can do it at home, be more than welcome. Come join these tournaments and see what you can do. Yeah, either join these tournaments, which is an experience all in itself. So if you guys are on the fence about coming to an offline event that is near you, and there are offline events everywhere throughout this country, I strongly urge you to save the money and try to do it because it is an experience. And I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to say that you're gonna go and you're gonna win and become Sonic Fox in one day. No, there's <laughs> way more things to do at these events, people to meet, people to play with, and just being around uh, a sense of uh, like a family uh, yeah. of people who love the same thing that you love. And I'm pretty sure we're supposed to be signing off. Not sure what's going on, Arturo running straight to the stage. But again, and if you guys don't want to give it a try at the offline or if it's you know too expensive to travel out or too much of a task to make it, uh, you know, there's a lot of great things in the online community. Big shout outs to War of the Gods and Stream.me. They put on injustice to online tournaments every week, at least while the season is active. So hit them up. Big shout outs to Mr. Aquaman. Big shout outs to Echo doing their thing holding it down on commentary because commentating from a remote location is not an easy thing to do. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> especially when you got stuff going there at home. I know uh, Echo has, has a kid and stuff. You oh, yeah, he's a family crying man. in the background. <laughs> like, you know, stuff happens, so. No, it's definitely a difficult thing, and, and huge shout-outs to